All right, everybody, no full intro just because I don't do the full intro for the second game of the day, just because I don't know if the game is going to be starting on time or not. Um, first off, before I even get into it, apologies for not being able to do the first game. Brom is up 27-12 with four minutes left on the defenders in what would be a pretty big upset on paper. I did say I didn't like DC this year a whole lot. I did say I was a bit iffy on DC, especially offensively now that Abram Smith was out, and I am a... Uh, I know it's one game, but I that, that was one of my bull picks that DC would not do that hot this season. Obviously one game, but still. I'm not sure how many people saw St. Louis and DC at the bottom of the division after one week. And the Brahmas in sole possession of first place, barring anything crazy. Uh, apologies, I couldn't do that game. So I had my alarm set for 8 a.m. this morning, which is 11 o'clock Eastern time. I had my alarm set, and for whatever reason, it did not go off. So... I have no idea what happened. I'm guessing it had to do with my phone updating. Sometimes it does happen. I My phone was not charging last night. That Maybe that was the reason, but that has... Because I don't sleep through my alarms. I, I'm one. I'm a guy that does not sleep through alarms. I've always been good at getting up the moment my alarm goes off. And I even went to bed early last night. That's why I didn't put out a video today. To make sure that I got enough sleep for the, for the doubleheader. After how fun yesterday was. So apologies, I couldn't do that game. That was not supposed to... Not supposed to happen. I'm, I'm, I'm bummed because obviously we had that crazy sequence in the fourth quarter with the touchdown spinning penalty and then the challenge for the false start and then everything w with that. Like, that was crazy. And obviously the Brad Wing touchdown was insane. That would have been amazing to call. So apologies I couldn't do that again. That was not supposed to happen. And fingers crossed it doesn't happen again. That, that was a one-time thing. Um, but we should be good now. Obviously we're doing this game. That is taking place right after between the Memphis Showboats and the Houston Roughnecks. My guess is that it's going to start on ESPN Plus, and then we'll move over to ESPN. That's my guess, um, just because I, this game is probably not going to be over by 12 o'clock. Actually, it's impossible for it to be over. We have the two-minute warning. There's still three minutes left, and it's 2.57 on the East Coast. So, with that being said, welcome to JG9 Live. We've got a fun game for you today for the final game of week one. It is the Memphis Showboats against the Houston Roughnecks of Al between two teams in the USFL division. Now, for those who are a bit confused, uh, because there was some confusion yesterday in the chat, the Houston Roughnecks are the brand of the team that was in the XFL. So the Roughnecks are the brand of the team that was in the XFL. They brought over five XFL teams, three USFL teams. But they kept the Roughnecks ran over the Gamblers brand because the Roughnecks actually had played in Houston in 2020 and 2023. The Gamblers had never played in Houston. 2022, 2023, they were playing in hub cities. So that is why it's the Roughnecks. However, they're in the USFL division. And to make matters even more confusing, the roster, for the most part, if you look at the roster, it is basically the Gamblers roster, not the Roughnecks roster. So if you were a Houston Gamblers fan last year, um, it's basically that roster, but just with a new name, the Roughnecks. A lot of the players on the Roughnecks went to other teams. Kickoff at 306. Yep, just popped up on the um, on the bottom line for ESPN. Um, so if that's not even the slice bit confusing, you're good. But but long story short, this is basically the Houston Gamblers roster, just with the name the Houston Roughnecks. So it's um, yeah, DBC Fusion, <laughs> Dragon Ball C Fusion Dance. Basically, if that is not even the slightest bit confusing to you, then you're good. If, if not, you're okay. Like, like you look at the look at the roster. Like the starting running back is C.J. Pledger. He was on the Gamblers last year. You look at the receivers. You got Justin Hall. You got uh, Kiki Chisholm, both on the rough or both on the Gamblers last year on the Roughnecks this year. So, yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, he's strong. Never got a field goal attempt. I was bummed about that. I guess we'll have to wait. I mean, that's, that's I guess that's the one bright spot to me not calling this game is that we get to wait on on his next field goal attempt. Um, but that was a good win for the Brahmas, assuming they they hold, which I'm assuming they will. I mean, people thought the Brahmas and the Panthers would be the two worst teams. They had the two worst championship odds, and look at them—they're both one and zero, beating some pretty good teams on paper. Yeah, Destroying is on the Brahmas. He is on the Brahmas, yes. But with that being said, my name is Jared Garner, and thank you so much for tuning in for the stream. If you've never been to a JG9 Live stream before, how it works like this, ask me any questions in the chat. I'll be happy to answer about anything and everything. 
Um, I'll be doing live play, playing color commentary on the game. Happy Easter to all those who celebrate. And yeah, any questions, fire away in the chat. Any donations, I'll get to your question right away. Helps the channel out a ton. Thank you so much in advance for all the love and support. Um, this is going to be a fun stream. And thank you guys yesterday because we had, I, I looked at all the play-by-play -play and, re and reaction streams for both the games. And we had on JG9 the number one stream on YouTube for both games. I'm not counting streams that didn't have a person. So there, there were some streams where they got deleted right after because they're, they're basically botted streams. It's, it's basically you have a, a stream where it, it says they're doing the game and then says click here to watch the game and it takes you to uh, illegal episode. So I'm not counting, I'm not counting that um, because those, those aren't, those aren't streams. But in terms of like play and play and reaction, we have the number one on both in terms of views. So and I think we had concurrently at the end of that Panthers Battlehawks game, we had over 200 people in the stream, which was nuts. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, really, really appreciate it. And again, this is going to be, unless my alarm fails, this is going to be the place to watch the UFL all season. We got the setup in place. We got the commentary, we got the scoreboard, we got everything in place, so thank you guys so much. If you are a YouTube member, thank you so much for being a member. Your support helps the channel out a ton. You get a lot of cool perks, including green text next to your name. You get to use emojis in the chat, including the Showboat logo and the Roughnecks logo. So you can drop a support for one of those teams in there. You get a lot of other cool emojis as well. You get your name at the end of each video. On top of that, you also get your name scrolling across the chat at all times which is awesome, and you get members-only Q&A streams at the end of each month, and then you get more perks um, if you join a higher tier, but um, keep that keep that in mind. All right, Showboats Roughnecks is airing on ESPNU right now, uh, but that kickoff is not until 3.06, so I'm just going to stay on ESPN for now. I'm just going to stay on ESPN until DC goes, um, until DC turns the ball over. Can NFL players go back to the UFL if they don't if they want to, if they don't find the NFL good for them? Yes, yes. That is absolutely allowed. Yep. Yeah. They are allowed to go back to the UFL. 100%. 100%. Um, what else? We also have on the bottom line, we've got a bunch of different things, including you can see the stats from all from the games that took place. You can see some over-unders. You can see some um, Overrunners for today's game, you can see the stats and the schedule for week one and week two. And you can also follow me on social media, jerogary 9 nfl on Twitter. We have over 4,000 followers there. Who won the game before this? Uh game before this was won, or it's taking place right now, so Brahmas are up 27-12 over DC. 27-12 over DC. I'm rooting for the Showboats for the first true XFL team to... Wait, the, the Showboats... No, the Showboats were in the USFL last year. We can't get a true XFL win. Um, well, it almost mean the Roughnecks. The Roughnecks would be. Roughnecks would be, but that that's basically the Roughnecks are, are XFL in name only. They're really the USFL roster. So, yeah, for for all intents and purposes, XFL was 0-2 against the USFL in Week One. I like the rivalry developing. I like the rivalry developing between the two. Yeah, Adrian McCarron did that. Yeah, because he wanted to play, which I totally get. He's got nothing to prove in the NFL at this point. And again, this stream, um, prize picks. I have a promo code on prize picks. Use my promo code Gator 900% to pass match up to 100 bucks. Helps the channel out a ton. Um, they do UFL props. They do UFL. So you can bet on the UFL, and all you have to do um, is just pick more or less than for over-unders. So it's not um, it's not like odds. It's, it's that. You know, Brahmas are XFL. Yeah, Brahmas were always XFL. Yeah. Yeah, Rich Campbell, that's a that's a crazy draft story. I, I might do one on that. I've wanted to talk about Rich Campbell for a while. You know, Brahmas, Defenders, yeah, basically Brahmas, Defenders, Renegades, and Battlehawks are XFL. Um Stallions, Panthers, Showboats are USFL, and then the Roughnecks, it's complicated. Um, why was there no live stream the previous game? Yeah, long story short, it was supposed to be, and then my alarm just didn't go off. My alarm just did not go off. So that's basically what happened. My alarm did not go off. All right, I'm going to turn over to, to ESPNU. 
ESPNU. Yeah, that's basically what happened. There was supposed to be a game, and then um, my alarm just did not go off. So, no dumb decisions yet for the UFL. No dumb decisions yet. Do you think the NFL needs less film study QBs? Basically, QBs who suck when they play but always get NFL jobs because they're great in the QB room. I mean, it depends on what your QB room is. If Like, they can help out for guys that are younger. Like, if you have... Like, I think a film study QB could be very good for a young rookie quarterback. But... For non... But for teams... Like, other teams that don't need one, like, like the Jaguars or whatever, that'd be terrible. Has anyone in the NFL completed an onside kick? Um, many, many times. <laughs> many, many times. Yeah, Rasheed Rice could be in some trouble. Oh, man, that, that receiving unit could be depleted. Uh, yeah, I haven't looked at like the full details of what, of what happened with Rice, but that would not be good. I have not looked at the full details, so I don't know how serious it is. I don't know how... All I saw was that was something happened with Rice. Let me, let me actually check what happened, what happened with Rice. Oh, wait, someone's got dash cam footage. Oh, holy cow. Wait, hang on. I'm watching the dash cam footage right now. Hang on. All right. BW Funk Gang has kicked off with a tour. Thank you so much. Was she Rice could be in a lot of trouble. He could be. He could absolutely be. Thank you so much for the donation, man. Really appreciate it. And happy Easter to you, man. All right. So, again, this game's starting on ESPNU. The quarterback for Memphis, Case Cookus. He was at the Philadelphia Stars in 2022 and 2023. Looked pretty good there when he had offensive line help. He looked really good 2022. Not, as, not so much in 2023, but then again, his offensive line was absolutely garbage in Philly. If you watched any of those games, he was getting mauled over there. I don't know who won the coin toss, but Memphis getting the ball to start, so... We are going to do that. And we're officially underway in Houston. It's where they painted the end zones, but not the um, the logo at midfield. Kick off, take it to the 25, to the 30, and down at the 34-yard line. So that's where Memphis is going to start off. And how's it going, Cujo? Welcome to the stream. Happy Easter to you. First and 10 at the 34-yard line for Case Cookus. One of the best QBs in the USFL. But again, he had no um, he had no offensive line. He had no offensive line whatsoever over there. One of Memphis' big problems last year was quarterback play. Case Cook is, could potentially fix that. Here we go. First and 10. Ball at the 34-yard line to get things started off. Actually, they're going to mark it at the 35. Man in motion. Cook is takes a snap. He's going to fire a quick swing pass. Ball is caught behind the line of scrimmage. Gain of two yards on the play. Daywood Davis on the grab there. So it brings up second and eight. Yeah, so you got mauled, yep. <laughs> Did play in that division with Pittsburgh, so yeah. He play, yeah, Philadelphia. Yeah, he played with the Philadelphia Stars, but Pittsburgh Maulers, rest in peace. Rest in peace. All right, second and eight. We got three wide, two on the far side, one on the near side. Cook is under center. And that's... Uh, Definitely some pre step movement, but who is it going to be on him? Three guys on Memphis move. I didn't see Houston jump to the neutral zone. But the referees think otherwise, and they say encroachment, so... Second and three. So I've noticed the difference between the ESPN broadcast and the, and the Fox broadcast. Obviously, Fox broadcasts look way cleaner. They talk way less about betting on those. Like, this UFL bug is ugly for the, um, for ESPN. Fox does a way better job at presenting. Playoffs work, two XFL teams, two USFL teams. Second and three, the handoff. This time it goes to Darius Victor, and he will get maybe a yard on that once can bring him third and two. Darius Victor... Really good running back last year with the New Jersey Generals. This is basically a new-look Memphis offense for the most part. New quarterback, new starting running back. 
Victor, 554 yards at 5.4 yards per carry last year with the Generals. Again, the running backs in the, U in the USFL were way better than the XFL. Finds this guy in the flat, wide open, first down, and then to the 45 out of bounds. He goes to the 41 yard lines. Wes Saxton Jr. on the grab. Wes Saxton, former South Alabama tight end, also with the Generals. Again, Generals did not come back, but there is a flag on the play. Well, this one might be coming back. Favorite NBA team, Suns. What team should they bring back in the future? So they're going to call illegal formation, so wipe out the huge game by Saxton. It's going to be a loss of five as a result. Brings up third and seven. Now, Houston didn't play at BBVA. They didn't, they didn't play at BBVA. I think they played where they no they played at Houston uh, they played at um, at Houston. Now they're playing at Rice. They switched stadiums, but I mean the Dynamo used to play at Houston, but they didn't play at BBB yet. Yeah, John Filippo, he was a Jaguars OC. Wasn't that good with us? Was not that good with us? Yeah, Houston played at, at U of Houston. They should bring back the Breakers. Yeah, I think the Breakers would be the, the most logical team to bring back the stars just for blob i love blob slant route caught first down at the 49 yard line espn i think the game is moving over now to espn so if you're watching on espn you you want to flip back to espn that ball by the way caught by Vinny papale you recognize that last name yes relation to the Eagles legend from Invincible. E oh, I'm, I'm thrilled there's no hub. The hubs were terrible. For just excitement, it's like tough to care about the teams who are just, you're rooting for uniforms and not cities. Play action, the flat ball is dropped, and it's probably better that he dropped it because it would have been a loss of one. Nice hard hit there. Sage Surratt, the intended target on the play. Again, completely different look for Memphis offensively. Sage Surratt on the New Orleans Breakers. They really got a lot of talented guys from the dispersal draft. Yeah, I do. I, I think ESPN is more transparent. I will say, I will give them that. ESPN is way more transparent than, than Fox with the live mics and the, and the referee rooms and, and the interviews are way more transparent. But there's some things that they don't do as well as Fox. It's basically two different broadcasts. Handoff, no gain on the play, third and ten coming up. Well, it's bizarre. It's like you're watching two different leagues. But it's really the same league, obviously. It's very, very different. Very different. You know, Hum model is gone. It's probably it's probably why they only kept three USFL teams because they only have three stamps, not counting Cannon, Ohio. Because Cannon was the home of Pittsburgh and New Jersey, but obviously that's not in Pittsburgh or New Jersey. All right, third and 11, and there's going to be a clock stoppage. It looks like Memphis unable to get the snap off in time, so they're going to call timeout. They'll have two left. If I want Memphis in the same conference as the Pacers so badly, the NBA should switch to north and south. No, the, the whole point of, of the Timberwolves being in the east instead of the west is so that the time zones work out for them because right now you have the timberwolves on central time they're not near anyone and their games are starting at 10 o'clock local time north south would change nothing about that you know blandino's awesome blandino is incredible i love blandino he, he was so nice to me when I interviewed, like, I asked him a question and he, like, got back to me right away about a rule from 2020. He's also doing a vid with five with five point vids. He's, he's super, super easy to contact. Like, super, super chill. Why are the Roughnecks at the University of Houston Rice Stadium is a downgrade? I agree. I think it's, it's got to do with the rent. I'm guessing it's got to do with the rent. Also, I have to remember that last year, it probably did with same availability too, because Houston, um, remember last year, XFL season was right after the NFL season, so it didn't go into the summer, and this year it's going into the summer. So that's probably why. 
And renovations, yes. And renovations. Trailblazers and Celtics on the same continent. Why, why would that make any sense? You can't, like, travel-wise would be a nightmare. Time zone-wise would be a nightmare. It doesn't make any sense. Renovate, yeah, reno renovations also. You're going to see family a bit later, but I can hang for a bit. Thank you for tuning in, K. Hansen. Thank you so much for tuning in. I didn't realize they were doing renovations there. I didn't realize they were doing renovations. You went to a Sea Dragon team last Easter. Hope they come back. Yeah, just it has to do with stadium availability with them because they had to... Oh, it's two things with, with them. One, same availability because they had games at like Thursdays and, and weird days. So they didn't have a set day unlike some other teams. So that kind of hurt attendance last year. The other thing with Seattle, obviously it's so far out of the way compared to the other teams. I think they want to they wanna, um, centralize it a bit. Destroying had no field goal attempts. Yeah, we got we got to wait on that. Not that they needed to, because the Brahmas won. Not that not that the Brahmas need a kick. Who's the best rules analyst in the broadcast? I think it's Blandino. I think Blandino. Sterator. I I feel like Sterator. Um. Will agree with a lot, even if if it's not the right call. Sterator might be the best on like TV and talking, but in terms of his like viewpoints, I'm not sure he's. He's way more likely to agree with whatever happens. Meanwhile, in the Elite Eight, 36-34 Purdue at halftime. Yeah, A's games have been brutal in terms of attendance. Mike Carey was the best. <laughs> I love Mike Carey because you could just bet on, on like, everything he said he was going to be wrong. Just bet the opposite. 1984 Browns-Pats, I have not seen that game. 140 million renovations because of the big wow I didn't realize it was that I didn't realize they were doing renovations and I didn't realize it was that much wow you know I I, I get that that Houston yeah it was not a simple thing to make the cut the gamblers because there was no need for them to have two teams in Houston over the middle ball is caught on third and 11 caught on the play by David Davis his second catch of this drive and it's a first down at the 40 yard line it's a plus territory on this opening drive might carry the coat you know, Mike Carey, Mike Carey was amazing because he got 90% of what he said wrong. It was basically CBS's answer to be more like Fox and have a rules analyst like Mike Pereira. Except they forgot the part where the rules analyst has to know what he's talking about and be right. You know, the the, the Mike Carey bit's going to come. It's going to come at some point. Yeah, Terry McCauley was not good. Ter Terry McCauley was not good. First down. Kokos. First two reads not there. Fires over the middle of the field. Again, David Davis on the grab. This one, a gain of about three. Yeah, Hockey League would be fun. Hockey League would be a fun analyst. Well, the ring's on the wall for the A's to leave Oakland. I just don't know where they're going to go, because Vegas, uh, there's, there's going to be problems with that. Second and seven, incomplete pass. No grounding on the play was outside the pocket, and there was a receiver in the area. Third and seven. Yeah, the Jim Kramer football, basically. <laughs> Would Minnesota have gotten the Rams if the Vikings moved to L.A.? No, no. I, I'm not sure what would have happened, but I don't think Minnesota would have gotten the Rams. Yeah, Roughnecks are more well-known than the Gamblers because the, the Roughnecks played in Houston, so they have they have the branding, and the Gamblers don't really, unless you're counting the 80s. Yeah, I'll have to check out Browns Pats if there's, like, footage um, on the game. I know there's probably... I don't know if there's full game footage. I know there's... Highlight footage, just because uh, Conrad Dobler always has the, always supposed like highlights of the 80s games, but yeah. Third and seven, Cookus looking to step up, he's going to run, he's going to try to get the first down, he will dive, he comes up short, the, he was, he was down before the ball came out. They're going to say first down, I'm, I'm not so sure about that spot at first. As of now, it's a first down. He looked about a half yard short. Yeah, the yellow line's unofficial, but Cook has looked about half a line, half a yard short. Yeah, get Blandino on this one. Get Blandino on this one. I'm, I'm not sure. Are we getting a replay? Hit to get to the 30. Uh, they're, they're going. No, they're going. First down. They're going to say he got to the 29. I, I don't know about that one. I thought. Pretty of a favorable spot, but this one goes to Victor. Victor, no gain on play. Actually loses a yard. Brought down there by Ruben Foster, the former first-round pick from the 49ers. The former Alabama linebacker brings up second and 11. 
If a Saints Bengals full game footage ever came available, would it make it a normal vid or a two hour doc? Um, I'd probably make it not two hours, but it'd probably be at least 30 minutes. Hardest to find footage of? Ooh. By far, mid 70s. Mid 70s is the hardest to find footage of. Because, like, I'd say 1975. If we're counting, like, just post merger era, 75. Like, obviously, stuff from before the 60s is brutal. Second and 11. Cookus fires Mill. The field ball is. Caught at the 15-yard line, down at the 13. It's Jonathan Adams on the grab. Gain him 17 yards and a first down. Because here's the thing with the, um... Here's the thing with the, um... With the mid-70s. There's no full game footage, really. There was no full game footage. VHS recordings of games were really popular around, like, 77. That's really when you started getting them. Because that's when it became a, like m like more common to have VHS. But the problem with the mid-70s is that if you go like early 70s, you have these extended highlights because this week in pro football was an hour long. First and 10. Cookus, middle of the field again. It's been open all day and it's a catch down to the two-yard line. It's Vinny Papale. Gain of 11 yards and a first down. First and goal. But in the mid-70s, this week in pro football was cut to 30 minutes. Yeah, early 70s are easier to find than mid-70s. Not for, like, the VHS. Like, if you're talking, like, full game footage, no. It's about the same. About the same level of luck. But, in the... In the mid-70s, the highlight footage for the games, this week in Pro Football was cut to 30 minutes. So, well, 20 minutes if you have commercials. Timeout by the Roughnecks. Something they don't like. And this week of Pro Football was an hour long in the 70s. So, like, I'd say 1976 and 75 are the two toughest. Because that was when they, like, made this week of Pro Football not very good. And they cut the show in half, which means fewer highlights. So instead of having, instead of having, like, 10 highlights from a game, they would only show two. So that's why. It's very tough to find mid-70s. 60s, surprisingly, is actually pretty good. Not for VHS. Like, if you want, like, actual, like, like in-broadcast footage, no. But finding highlights, like, 1966, you get some good ones. AFL from 1968, you get some really good ones. Because the highlight shows were better. The highlight shows were way better. Thought I got lost in an Easter basket. Yep, that was it. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> A good amount of films from the 70s are way more poorly preserved than the 60s. Way more. Well, it's almost like how 80s footage looks great. And if you look at footage that got, like, like from the early 2000s, it looks like crap. First and goal, both the two. The handoff up the middle goes to Victor. Incomplete. Or, how did I say incomplete? Second and goal. No gain on the play is what I meant to say. Toby Johnson on the stop. Second and goal. Where did I discover that story of that player from the Saints Bengals game in 78? Um, it was from a book. It was from, I think it's called Tales from the Sidelines, the story of the Saints. I think it's called Tales from the Sidelines. And I do want to like a few teams, but it was from a book, and, and the free preview of that was online at the time. I'm not sure the free preview is there anymore, but. Second and goal. Cookus under center. Play action. Cookus, pressure, has to get rid of it, he cannot, down he goes, Toby Johnson once again! Got the stop on the first play, gets the sack on this one, brings up third and goal at the 10. Cookus got sacked a ton with the Stars last year, got no help from the offensive line here, tried to step up in the pocket, nothing doing, tried to hit the drag route, Wes Saxton Jr., clearly the intended target on the play is the first rate on a drag route, but he was covered pretty tightly. And by the time any sort of separation was created, Toby Johnson was on the backfield ready to deliver the boom. Third and goal. This is a 10-minute drive. Memphis started this at their own 35, looking to get into the end zone at the 9-yard line. They're perfect on third down so far today. Third down. Houston sends four. Cookus, back corner of the end zone. One-handed attempt, incomplete pass. Sage Surratt, the former breaker tight end, the intended target on the play. Brings up fourth and goal. And you figure the field goal unit is coming out. Matt Coughlin on the attempt. Number 
number 49. New kicker in Memphis. This one, chip shot right down the middle. 27-yard try is good with 4.31 left. Memphis on the board first. The Showboats leading at 3-0. Again, for those who missed it, um, any of the UFL games earlier, final score, the Stallions beat the Renegades. You've got the um, you got the Panthers beating the Battlehawks, and you had earlier today the Brahmas defeating the Defenders. Cam Sennett, I don't know if he's been arrested, but he's been cut. He's been cut. I wish there was a website that takes us to games from 1950s to today. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Problem is that NFL films didn't exist until the 60s. So, yeah, how many times are the ESPN guys going to bring the over-under today? Annoying. Yeah, ESPN focuses way more on betting than Fox. They really care about the UFL from a gambling perspective compared to Fox. Which is unfortunate. I would never do that. Speaking of which, if you want to use my promo code, <laughs> PricePix, Gator9, 100% price match up to 100 bucks. Oh, come on. What, 1989 sub by Bobby Brown was, on, was part of the Ghostbusters 2 soundtrack? Are you kidding me? That's one of my favorite... That, that's one of my favorite... That's my favorite Bobby Brown song of all time. On, my, on our own, of course. That's my favorite Bobby Brown song of all time. That is... That's, like, incredible. Hit number two on the Billboard Hot 100. I think it was blocked by Right Here Waiting by Richard Marks. Because that was number one for a while. But, yeah, like, August of 89. It was big. I love that song. If you're a NASCAR fan tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we'll go to Sunday Night Racing on Richmond. I love I love night racing. Is it just me or are the USFL teams better than the XFL teams? I think it's too early to tell, but I will say this. I will say this with the USFL teams. I don't think this part's an overreaction. The USFL was better at running the ball last year than the XFL. The USFL had way better running play than the XFL. The only good running back last year in the XFL was Abram Smith. And he's out for the season with a torn ACL. There were quite a few good running backs last year in the USFL. Wes Hill, CJ Marable, Victor. There's, there was a lot of good ones. But um, XFL really struggled running the ball. Your yeah, video of the crash is out. Okay, here we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch it right now. Video of the crash is out. All right, let's see. Whoa! Holy! What on earth? What? He came out of nowhere! No turn signal, changing lanes. You have to figure this is this is a highway. Yeah, it's definitely a highway. He's going probably two and a half times what the other car's going. So you figure that car's going seventy. He's probably going 150. That's insane. CBS Sports HQ Network has at least three to four gambling segments per hour. Although that's... CBS Sports HQ, that's a taped thing, though. That's not like a live thing. They probably just... Because that's not really like a real network. Oh, my God. Yeah, I... He's going at least 150. Let me... Holy cow. That is at least 150. How similar are teams from last year? Not at all. For the, these two teams, the Roughnecks are basically the gamblers. The Showboats got a whole new offense. The Showboats basically took advantage of the dispersal draft more so than any other team. That kickoff takes a bounce, and it's going to be... Wait, what? What on earth? Wait. Wait, what? I'm very confused as to what just happened. So it's Roughneck's ball at the 8, but the, the showboats recovered the kick. Wait, what? What am I missing? I, I... Well, first down for Houston at the 8, but the... The Roughnecks recover the 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 Showboats recover the kick. That was a is the rule is the rule different? Like I, I know there there are different rules, obviously. That one was not part of the 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 book. Handoff gain of five. Second and five. 
like I say, I looked at all the rules, obviously, with, between the, the XFL and the, and the, U, um, the UFL, but... No, they, they fell in inbounds. They fell on that inbounds. CMC said they want to talk to him because one of the cars is registered to him, but for now he's not a suspect. Okay. Yeah, if it's registered to him, I, I get why they want to talk to him. But whoever was the driver, I don't know who the driver was, but whoever it was, we're going, to, going at least 150 and they should be arrested. Second five, screen pass behind the line of scrimmage. Ball's caught, but it's probably going to be an illegal block. Illegal block there. Ball came out at the end. Did the ball, was he down beforehand? We got a lot to sort out here. They're going to say touchdown Memphis for now. We're going to see first if the ball was down. The penalty is going to be on Houston for a block. Does it look like Rice or no? I have no clue. We, we don't know what the driver looks like. We just saw the, the... the. Oh, I didn't see the guy come out of the car. Okay, so the penalty is going to be on Houston for a block. Holding on Houston. But now we have to see what happens with the fumble. Was he down? Is this a scoop and score? As it stands, touchdown showboats. But we're going to see. Obviously, Blandino taking a look upstairs. As it stands, it's 9 nothing. We're about to find out. Again, that pass caught behind the line of scrimmage. By Isaiah Henney. Let's see, was he down? This is going to be the money angle. And you can't tell from that angle where the ball's coming out. I think we need the reverse angle. We're not getting the reverse angle. Because he spins when he loses, con when, he, when the ball comes out. When he loses control, we need the reverse angle. We need the behind angle. The front angle is not going to help. The front angle is not going to help. As it stands, touchdown for the showboats. And it's going to count. It is a touchdown. It is a scoop and score. Memphis gets it. 9-0. They're going to go for one, making a 10-point game. Teams are perfect this season going for one, not anymore. And it will remain a one-score game. Darius Victor getting stuffed, but it's been all Memphis so far this game. 9 nothing. Well, that wasn't the that wasn't ESPN's fault on the angle. They're, they're looking at whatever Blandino was looking at. We needed the reverse angle. We didn't really get a good reverse angle. We needed the, the, the slow down reverse. But I guess it was it was pretty obvious upstairs. So. What was the sequence? Um, so I guess, I guess the, the weird kickoff thing, I, I guess it worked out for Memphis in the end. <laughs> um, the sequence for the... For what? The, the DC San Antonio game? That was nuts. That was nuts. Um, basically, DC had the ball in the red zone, scored a touchdown. Then their offensive lineman gets ejected for spitting on a guy after the play. So, personal foul, flagrant, he's ejected from the game. Then, San Antonio decides, wait a second, we're going to challenge this play because we thought there was a false start. So, they use their super challenge. The challenge is successful. So, the it's a five-yard penalty, touchdowns off the board, and 15 yards for the spit. Then, Jordan Ta'amu gets hurt, but it's a first down for D.C. because San Antonio got called for taunting. New quarterback comes in, DeAndre Francois comes in for two plays. Then Ta'amu comes back into the game and throws basically a pick six. It wasn't pick six, but, but it was down to the five-yard line. It was absolutely nuts. So I'm not doing all four games next week. What I'm going to do is we're doing three. We're doing the Saturday afternoon game and we're doing both Sunday games. The reason being is that I will be at the final four. The final four is in Houston. Or I don't know why I said Houston. Um, I was thinking about Houston. The, the final four is in Phoenix and I'm going to try and go to that. So that is why I'm not doing the Saturday night game. I wish it was Saturday afternoon. I wish they did the... Two games Saturday afternoon. I would have gone at that point. But um, I will be at State Farm Stadium. Will Nathan work at a shot? I hope so. I hope so. I think right now, right now, I think he's, well, I don't know about with Brissett, but he he's better than every other QB on the Pats roster besides Brissett. I mean, he was great in the CFO. He was great during preseason. I really hope he plays. Is that the Mighty Football film? Mary Scatrath. <laughs> 
I call the, the kickoff. Okay, wait. I'm just going to tweet something out. So if you kick the ball off. What on earth is this camera angle? Or not camera angle, what's this filter? How's it going, uh... Ev one lur one C, how's it going? Were the games on in the afternoon? Um, yeah, let me check the schedule again. The schedule's scrolling on the bottom, but so we're doing the Brahma Showboats game. So we are doing the Brahma's game. Kickoff is gonna be fielded at the twenty. This time fielded cleanly and brought down to the forty yard line. So Houston will take over at the forty, looking to get something going here. It's been a rough start for them. They've had three plays on offense. And that's it. So first down to 40. So we're doing next week Brahma Showboats. We are doing... Uh, we're not doing Renegades Battlehawks, which is a bummer. I wanted to do the first Battlehawks game in St. Louis, but we're not doing that one. Uh, we're doing Stallions Panthers, and we're doing Roughnecks Defenders. So we're not doing Renegades Battlehawks, but we're doing every other game. Why is the championship always on a Monday? Because the final they got to do the Final Four on a Saturday. Just for travel purposes. First and ten. Hand off up the middle. Gain of two, maybe three yards on the play. The give there goes to TJ Pledger. And Pledger last season, over four yards a carry, 197 yards. Second and eight, they're going quick. Sidearm throw, caught by Pledger at the 45-yard line. Brings up third and four. I'm surprised that Houston's going quick, considering the fact that they've not had the ball at all today. That defense needs a breather. They need to get a first down here, because Houston's had the ball for one minute of game time. Yeah, Jake Bates, that was the first game he's made since high school. That's what, like, like, people were asking, like, like, what's his career long? And I was like, I don't know. Like, like I couldn't find anything online. Like, I know he did kickoffs. I know he had a 67-yarder at a pro day. But I couldn't find anything online. And I guess that was why. What do you think about Ice Cube offering Caitlin Clark $5 million to play in the Big Three League? Publicity stunt. Caitlin Clark's never going to accept it. Third and four. Throw off his back foot over the middle. Caught first, first down of the game for the Roughnecks. Down to the 44-yard line. Catch on the play there made by Kiki Chisholm. Chisholm last season, 16 catches, 244, and two touchdowns. Third leading receiver on the team. So first down at the 44 of Memphis. Again, only a one-score game, even despite this horrible start. Remember, nine points is a one-score game in the UFL because of a three-point conversion. Not that you would go for three this early. But the Roughnecks have to burn their second timeout. We've seen a lot of teams burning timeouts early on in week one. Because of the play clock issues and whatnot. Yeah, West Virginia did get screwed against Iowa. They played their hearts out in that game. They played their hearts out. Yeah, Rice Stadium is hosted Super Bowl, but the Astrodome is not. I don't know why Rice Stadium hosted Super Bowl 8, but not the Astrodome. That didn't seem to make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, I should note also the QB for Houston, now that they actually are on offense, I can bring it up. Jared Guarantano, the former Tennessee quarterback. I know him well from SEC play. Who's the highest rated WNBA player? Or highest paid? Oh. I don't know the answer. Um, I would guess Wilson or Ionescu. I would guess one of them, but I, I have no clue. Yeah, 22 is my finally, uh, probably the final year of Sunday Night Baseball, which I'm not opposed to, considering how bad Carl Ravich is at play-by-play. Play. If you see it the other day with the, um, in the Rangers-Cubs game, do you see that? He was confused as to why handoff, maybe a gain of one on the play. He was confused as to why the, uh, I think it was the Rangers, or the Cubs threw home. Instead of trying to get the double play. Because basically, I think it was bases loaded, nobody out. And 
He was confused in the 10th inning with the game tied as to why the Rangers threw home instead of, or the Cubs threw home instead of trying to turn two. And it's like, because they would win the game. Second and nine. Guarantano has to avoid the sack. He's going to do it for the moment. Now he's going to fire well out of bounds. That one's going into the fourth row. Caught! It is caught by a fan in a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> but unfortunately, he's not playing for the Roughnecks. So third and nine. Oh, the full Pat Sprouts game is on YouTube? Ooh. All right, RCA don't think get a Super Bowl because their stadium holds less than 60,000. So that's why. The context of the video war for Chase Field, oh, I, there was no context. There was absolutely no context. That was just some, you could basically pay 100 bucks to put a message on the Cold Stone video board, and someone put that. Their relationship, probably on the rocks. Guantanamo slam pass caught, going to be short of the first down. At the 38-yard line. So, fourth and... Call it four. Decision time here. You're in no man's land. Be a 56-yard field goal attempt if they want to try it for J.J. Molson. I think he'd go for it here. But they'll have the... You know, they do have to get a playoff. There is a two-second earnest for the play clock and the game clock. They do have to get a playoff. And as of now, they're leaving the offense out there, which is probably the right call. Again, they have to get a play. So if they're trying to get in with a hard count, it's not going to work. There is a difference between the play clock and the game clock. Are they trying to get the hard count? They, they do realize there's a difference. They do realize there's a there's a difference. And Houston's going to be out of timeouts. So they're going to think this one over. Wait, are they taking... Wait, do they do all that just to take delay of game? That, I don't, I don't get that. I don't, if that, if that was a play, why would you call that short pass on third down? Why would you call a short pass on, what, why, why would you, why would you call a short pass on third down that's not going to get the first if you're just going to take the delay of game afterwards? That doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. Did they not know the situation? Did they not realize there was a difference in the play clock and the game clock? That, I'm not going crazy, right? That that made no sense. No, you no, you get three timeouts. They wasted all three of them. Or they wasted two of them. Hang on, just swing it out. I am so confused. That was baffling. Probably the first dumb decision of the year. I, I'm baffled. Yeah, if someone wants to pay 100 bucks to do the Cold Stone video board thing for me, I'm, I'm down. The, the reason it started, because I, I do that a lot where I post the video board. The reason it started was because... Um, by the way, end of the first quarter, 9 nothing showboats. Yeah, first quarter just ended. First quarter just ended. Wait, your question about the um, the division winners. You have Eagles, Niners, Bucks, Lions, Dolphins, Chiefs, Texans, Bengals. And that, those are pretty good picks. I've, I've got the Bills winning the East, but pretty good picks. The reason it all started was because back in April, I did not hear the audio of the bridge collapse, no. But I saw the video of the, um, I saw the video of the other shoe race thing, um, yeah, JJ and Jason, they're coming back. I just, I have to figure out with, with my schedule and everything. But they're coming back, for sure, 100%. Um, you know, the reason it all started was because there was a message on the video board a year ago. Um, where someone posted a, um, someone posted a message that was clearly a, a t an attempt to save their relationship. They spent a hundred bucks to post an, an attempt to, to save their relationship. Um, the message was, and I think you can, hang on. I think John Boy Media actually tweeted my photo. I think John Boy Media tweeted it. Yeah, 
Yeah, it actually like got some news. Yeah, I yeah I tweeted it out. So if you want to see it, basically the message read, Alexandria W. We're all we're off to a great start. You are my person. Let's keep fighting for us? Question mark. I love you. And I just lost my mom. I'm like what? How down bad is this person? And what was the context behind that? So after that, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna start posting. Like, weird messages from the video board. And, like, usually the video board's just, like, birthday, like, happy birthday, happy anniversary, like, welcome to your first game, like, congrats on graduating, like, stuff like that. And sometimes you get, like, these weird messages. And, yeah, that one got news. So, fourth and nine, they're going to punt this one away. Punt here. Field it at the 11-yard line, fair catch. Yeah, the dumb decision was basically... Houston calls a short pass on third down to bring a fourth down and it's manageable. So you figure they're going to go for it, but then they take the delay of game penalty to negate what they just did. And it was intentional. I don't think they realized there was a difference between the play clock and the game clock. I don't know if they realized that. Either way, it's going to be Memphis ball at the 12 yard line, but there was a penalty. The most bizarre message, that was probably the most bizarre. I've seen some weird ones, though. I've seen some weird ones. Um... I've seen some very, very weird ones. Did they break up? I have no clue. I, I need to know the story. The weirdest Bill Ward message I've seen at a game, I mean, Alexandria W. might be the winner. Might be the winner in the clubhouse. So while we get that sorted out, it's going to be Memphis Ball. Oh, we have members! I told, I didn't even tell you. Daniel Johnson ran for four months. University of Hawaii is pushing bids now for the new stadium. They're local politicians, so we don't want a new stadium. They just want to expand the temporary location. They would then use the money to help rebuild Maui for affordable housing projects. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough, that's a tough call. Um, can they even expand the new stadium? Because it's, it's, the footprint's pretty small. Footprint on that seems pretty small. Thank you again for being a member for four months now. Thank you so much. First down the 16-yard line. Out route. Caught at the 24-yard line. Gain of eight on the play. They are really getting Daywood Davis involved. That's the fourth catch for Davis today already. And this is just the second offensive drive. The yeah, Angels call a team meeting after an 0-2 start. That's always a good sign. Amphibia member for six months now. Thank you so much. And the McArdle tier. Thank you. If I could have my way, CBS should get Sunday baseball, NHL, in the summer portion of the NASCAR season, and the Daytona 500. I would also like to see the NBA go to Fox as well. I don't think CBS is getting baseball again. I think after the baseball network disaster in the 90s, I don't think they're going to do it. CBS is do a good job. They have the best depth chart of announcers by far. Second two, handoff tries to bounce outside. Is Victor Victor trying to get there? Nothing doing. Again, Victor, very good running back last year, but Houston's done a very good job keeping him in check. There's a flag on this play as he's pushed out of bounds by Colby Richardson, the cornerback. Holding on the offense, so make it second and... 12. Multiple holding penalties, actually. And they still couldn't get any yards. So back him up. Factor Fiction. Rice gets placed on the commissioner's exempt list of fiction. I think it's too early to tell. Like, obviously, they're gonna... The season doesn't start for another few months. They're gonna let the investigation play out. It, it won't take long to figure out whether he was the driver. And if he was the driver, then yes, he will get placed on the exempt list. He'll get suspended. But... But right now, no, there's no reason to put him on the, the exempt list. If this was during the season, maybe, but right now there's no there's no reason to. Because we're still in March. And we have no clue. I'm trying to find the weirdest video board messages I found. Second and twelve. We'll do the next commercial break. Second and twelve. Over the middle. And that is caught by Jonathan Adams at the 20-yard line. So it's more manageable. Third and six. Happy Easter, my friends. How's it going, NJ Car fan? Thank you for tuning in. Why is, wait, question for you, why does it, by day, wait, why does it say ESPN, ABC all the time, did ESPN buy ABC? They're owned by Disney, they're owned by Disney, ESPN and ABC are both owned by Disney, so, that's why it's more brand awareness to get people to, to go to ESPN. Third and six, they send four, Cookus, clean pocket. Fires. Deep shot down the field. Incomplete. Flag on the play for pass interference. As they look for Jonathan Adams. He was pushed to the ground. Now, in the UFL, it's a 15-yard penalty unless they deem it was flagrant. If they deem it was intentional PI, and they did put a marker down at the spot of the PI. So we're going to see. Is this 15 or is this going to be a spot foul? 
Would Ray Rice still be in the NFL had he not been banned? No. I think part of the... He would have come back. The, 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 the thing with Ray Rice was that he was not that good by that point anymore. He, he was not good in 2013. So obviously, pass interference, first down. But was it flagrant? I don't think it's flagrant. I think it's just going to be a spot foul. Or 15-yard penalty. Yeah, just 15-yard penalty. Ball going to be at the 32-yard line. I think multiple guys could be a PI, and that's just what they're clearing up. NFL and Bally? Yeah, they're going to go to a, a network that doesn't exist anymore in most places. All right, first down, balls at the 35-yard line. Is the UFL permanently viable now? I don't know if it's permanently viable yet. I hope it survives. I hope it survives. But it's too early to say permanently viable. Handoff gain of two. Score will be for seven months now. Thank you so much. Has the NFL said if the Christmas game is going to be aired on the same network if they win the bid for both? Or does it have to be on different networks from what is known at the time? No, they, it can be on two different networks. It can be on two different ones. I don't think there's any set criteria. I think the first sign the UFL will be viable is if you see teams building their own stadiums for it. And obviously that will probably, like, never happen. But I think the moment, like, you saw MLS is like, oh, this league's not going to be like the NASL. This league's going to last is when teams start building their own stadiums. That's really the first sign. Second eight off his back foot. Cook his fires. Did he get both feet in? First foot was in. Second foot was not. And there was a flag on the play. So get that dirty laundry out if you are a member. Yeah, Illinois yesterday. I mean, they played well in the first half. And then I don't know what happened in the second half. Football for a buck by Jeff Perlman on the original USFL. I've heard good things about the book. I have to get it. Holding. Will they accept or decline? They're going to accept it. Bring up second and 18. Okay, I found another weird video board message. I found another weird one. This is from a game last year. Dennis, I want to be your favorite hello and your hardest goodbye. Will you live in sun with me and the girls? Question mark. Whatever the heck that means. And it fell on speed. Second and 18, he got three wide, two on the first side, one on the near side. Man lines up on the near side of the field. One-on-one -on -one is Jonathan Adams. Now it's four wide. Cook is play action. Not sure why you play action on second and 18. You're not going to fool anyone, but slant route caught at the 45, down to the 41-yard line. Cook is just cooking right now. Sage Surratt, the tight end, first down, the 43. Huge pickup there. First down and plus territory. Yeah, S-U-N. Yeah, S-U-N. First down to 40. Caught by David Davis. Catch number five for him. No gain wrapped up, but you can definitely see they're trying to get David Davis involved a ton. Second and 10. So all games are on ESPN or on ABC or am I missing something between the two networks? No, ESPN is cable. ABC is um, over the air. But they call it ABC on ESPN. Or ESPN on ABC to get people to realize, wait a second, if you like sports, go to ESPN. Yeah, I, I thought it said how's it go, Peter? I thought it said. Second and 10. Clean pocket, fires, Victor on the grab, breaks one tackle, and down to the 32-yard line. Third and two. A red and purple team in every sport. It's a good color combo. It's a good color combo. I, I will give you that. So I've seen some weird video board messages. Why did Monday night start at 9? Um, I'll answer that after this play. Because there's, there's a reason for it. There's a reason for it. Third and two. Cookus in the gun. Hands it off up the middle to Victor, and Victor will get the first down. He did two, got four down to the 28 first down. So Monday Night Football started at 9 a.m. or 9 p.m. Not 9 a.m., but 9 p.m. because um, 
primetime shows used to get really high ratings. There used to actually be, like, people used to watch primetime TV. So the idea was, we're going to show something at 8 and 8.30 and then show Monday Night Football at 9 so we can dominate the ratings. Now, there were some problems with that later on when primetime TV, the ratings were down with the rise of cable and other stuff. First down, Kokus. Pressure, fires, end zone! Bit too much for Surratt. Second and ten. How's it going, Pikachu? Welcome to the stream. I've not seen... or I've seen, like, clips of the PWHL. It would be... It looks it looks good. I like what they do with the jerseys with, with the PWHL. Putting the names on the bottom of the jersey. I love those. I love that. Such a simple but great... Great idea. Longest fourth down that I know... Um... I don't know if it's the longest, but 4th and 29 is with Ray Rice. Um, I think that was the... That's the longest off the top of my head. I don't know if that was the longest ever. Kokus, another end zone shot. Tight coverage. Pass interference on the play in the end zone. It should be a spot. It should be a 15-yard penalty. So put it at the 14. Again, it's, it's a 15-yard penalty in the UFL. Adams draws the P.I., I'll be at the 14-yard line. Have I ever watched a broadcast so bad I had to mute it just to enjoy the game? Oh, um, for the NFL, I think the closest I came was the Beth Moens, Jay Feely, Jaguars, Vikings broadcast. Should Nickelodeon do the CBS Thanksgiving game? My guess is that they're going to do Christmas. My guess is they'll do Christmas. If they can't get Christmas, I'm going to guess they do Thanksgiving. The April Fools is tomorrow. Don't know why I would hear your voice doing a Quidditch. Yeah, I have to figure out what I'm doing for April Fools. I'm doing anything. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. We'll see. So I haven't put out a video the last two days. Which kind of stinks. It's like the longest I've gone without posting a video. Play action. Sacked on the play. Loss of three. Second time today. Cookies has gone down. Brought down there. By Ron Heen Bigham. Brings up second and 13. Tomorrow's studio gets on Twitch. <laughs> so I usually watch my football on ABC or ESPN. Usually ESPN because you get the post because I like do overtime after the Monday football streams. I want to see like the post game show. Second and thirteen, ball at the sixteen yard line. Kokus send four drag route caught by the tight end Surratt. Surratt, nice low tackle, brings him down at the eleven. Sports Talk Show with the Tour, thank you so much. How do I become a member? Um, click the join button. If you're watching on mobile, there's no way to do it on mobile. I don't know why YouTube doesn't have that. Um, if you're watching on mobile, you, you click... Um, I don't think there's a way, for whatever reason. But if you're on... Um, if you're on um, desktop, or maybe even tablet. I'm not sure if tablet has it. But if you're on desktop, you just click the join button below. Third and eight. Cookus, they send four. Looking. Fires. End zone. Open. Did he get both feet in? What a play. Tyler Lockett-esque gets a touchdown for Vinny Papale. Looking invincible on that one. What a catch. 11 yards. Did he get both feet in? He did. Oh, my goodness. You need two feet in the UFL, and he got both of them. That was like the Tyler Lockett catch in that Thursday night game. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what a grab. I think that's good and it's nice like you can see the, the grass come up. That looks clean to me. That looks clean to me. Anita with a hundred. Thank you so much. Mission to you. Mission to you. Have a great broadcast. Talk to you later. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Miss you too. Miss you too. The one point try. Thanks, mom. Thank you so much. <laughs> Miss you too. One point try is no good. So 15 nothing. What a catch by Vinny. By, um, by Vinny Papali. Thank you so much, mom. Really, really appreciate it. Yeah, that's, that's my mom. Thank you so much. Mobile, you have to click, you have to close chat. Okay, you have to close chat and then join there. Thank you so much. 
Yeah, it feels weird doing Easter alone, but. So let me get let me get you in there. Let me get you in there. Most recent tour. All right. But what a catch by Vinny. Oh my goodness. That is one of the best cat that is one of the best catches in spring football. In the 2020s. I, I don't know if it beats the, the, the Winningham catch from last year. From the Running Gates Brahmas game. But that was incredible. Just make Easter alone, but don't feel bad. Yeah, I mean... It's weird to spend the holidays alone. It's weird. I mean, Easter maybe not as much. Thanksgiving was weird. Thanksgiving was weird. I thought that was J. Jenner's girlfriend. Oh, you, you think I have a girlfriend. <laughs> you think I have a girlfriend. <laughs> hm. Yeah. Definitely not. Oh, man. I have to change the score. I, I totally forgot it in the midst of all that crazy. I have to change the score. It's 15 nothing. I don't know why the score didn't update. There we go. 15 nothing Showboats. It's been all Memphis this game. Playing well offensively, playing well defensively. What's the weirdest sports name I've seen? Oh, by far. Um, the geniuses that thought, you know, we're going to put a, a team in a... Uh, football team in Boston. We're going to call them the Yankees. We're going to call them the Yanks. The Boston Yanks. Genius idea. That's my mom. I need it's my mom. She is my mom. April Fool's Day video. Video on NFL player pulling a prank, but it's inaccurate. I've thought about doing a video on, like, a 25-minute documentary on, like, the greatest run no one's ever heard of, and it's like a, like a one-yard run that meant absolutely nothing. Who be the announcers for a PBS game? I feel like you'd have to... I mean, you have to do a Sesame Street theme broadcast. Have to do Sesame Street. Will Houston be shut out? I mean, I've seen Guarantano play many times at Tennessee. I'm not putting it out of possibility. I'm not putting out the wrong possibility. I did say my two picks for the USFL division were Memphis, because Case Cookus, and I did say Birmingham, obviously. I had Birmingham as I won, Memphis as my two, and I had Houston and Michigan toward the bottom. I had Houston as my three. Yeah, Chicago Packers, yeah. Are you going to sit somewhere at the Final Four to where he might see you on TV? Um, unless they do a shot at the nosebleeds. No, I have not bought the tickets yet. I'm waiting to see, really, I'm waiting to see what happens today with Duke. Because if Duke loses, I mean, the prices are already, like, decent for three games. Like, they've already gone down 100 bucks with UNC out, all the Blue Bloods out for the most part. Kick off down to the 31 yard line. If Duke goes, they're gonna Duke goes south, they're gonna plummet even more. Duke loses, they're gonna, they're gonna plummet even more. I was waiting for like the um I was waiting for um Arizona to go out before thinking about going to the final four. And now they are out, which is great. But yeah, I'll be in I'll be in the nose, please. You imagine a team in Dallas called the Eagles. Yeah, I mean, Chicago Packers, NBA. All right. You know, I was never a Cartoon Network guy. First down, handoff. Gain of maybe two yards there at the 33-yard line. Run there by Tyon Evans. His first carry of the day. Yeah, like it's even Cleveland called the Ravens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I got changed to the Zephyrs due to outrage over Chicago, from Chicagoans over the obvious rivalry. Yeah, no one thought that through. No one thought that through. No one really thought that through. It's like calling team the Arizona Dodgers. It's basically the Arizona equivalent because we hate the Dodgers more than any other team. We're the Lakers. Second and eight. Four wide, two on the near side, two on the far side. Guarantano. Out route. Caught at the 38-yard line, out of bounds at the 39. Catch there made. He's signaling first down. He, it's, he's a solid yard and a half short. Isaiah Hetty, who had the fumble earlier on the grab. Oh, they, they are giving the first down? 
I thought he was... They're, they're saying he got the... But it was second and eight of the... It was second and... Yeah, I was gonna say. Thank you. Thank you, ESPN. I was gonna say. It was second and eight of the 33. He got to the 40. How is that a first down? I was gonna say, how is that a first down? There we go. Third and one. Handoff. Now you have the first down. Okay, there we go, ESPN. Bull came out the very end. He was down. No, he, he was down. I thought he was down, at least. He, he looked down. They were going to talk it over. He, he looked to be down. Yeah, he's he's down. He's down. That's that's a four-yard gain on the first down. I mean, let it play out. I get it. He he looked to be down to me. I They've already recovered one fumble today. I don't think that's a fumble recovery. I don't think that's a fumble recovery. The worst Jags OC of all time. I mean, Press Taylor is pretty bad. Press Taylor is pretty bad. Let's see. He looked to be down. Right there. Yeah, knees down, butts down, shoulders down, every part of the body in the hokey pokey is down, and then the ball comes out. That looked pretty obvious. That is going to be first down Houston at the 44-yard line. Just for feet would be a great store for Dan Schneider. He might have been in charge of the ad. <laughs> no, I got sleep. My my alarm just didn't go off. That was all that happened. My alarm my alarm just didn't go off. Like, I went to bed at 10 o'clock last night. Like, I went to bed earlier than I, than I thought. My plan was to go to bed at 10 to wake up at like 12.30 and then do a video. But then I was too exhausted to do a video. So I just was like, you know, I'm going to get some sleep and wake up for the games. And obviously my alarm didn't go off. Biggest upset in the NFL that I know of. I mean, Super Bowl three, Jaguars, Broncos, 96, Washington replacement game in 87. Over Dallas. All right, first down at the 43-yard line. Guarantano, they send four. Guarantano looking, steps up, has to win the sack. He cannot down. He goes to the 36-yard line, brought down on the play by number 42, Jordan Ferguson. Loss of seven, second and 17. Would someone who's invested in cryptocurrency be a good expert in football betting? No. No. No, crypto is... <laughs> I, I don't get people that invest in crypto. Crowell at the 40-yard line, caught to the 45, down to the 48-yard line. Nice yards after the catch by Anthony Ratliff-Williams. Oh, did the Marlins lose again? Did they get swept in a four-game series with the Pirates? Oh, my God. All right, third and five of the 48. Four wide, one on the far side, three on the near side. Yeah, Chicago Hurts predated the NFL, 1898. Third and five, Guarantano, wide open, caught the 43, trying to break a tackle down to the 39-yard line. Catch on the play there made by Emmanuel Butler. The Butler does it and gets a first down. Gain of, let's call it, 14 yards on the play down to the 39-yard line. Which version of Cat in the Hat would I choose? Mike Myers' Cat or Cat in the Hat knows a lot about that? Oh, easily Mike Myers. It's a horrible adaptation, but it's a phenomenally funny movie. First down, Gorontano slides down the 35-yard line. Flag on the play. It's not going to be for the for the hit. Obviously, he, he held up. We'll see what the flag is. A lot of dirty laundry on this one. You know, look, I, I fully get why the Seuss family was furious about the Mike Myers Cat in the Hat movie because it is borderline PG-13. It probably should have been PG-13. Holding on the play, so to get the four-yard run. But it is a hysterical movie. It's it's a cat that made for adults. That's what it is. It is not made for kids. It is made for adults. They see that he reached 100,000 subs. Someone told me that yesterday. Yeah, I I have no clue. Can't say Chiefs to trade where she writes to the NHRA. <laughs> HBO owns Sesame Street now. They've owned it for like five years, I think. Basically, all it means is that they get the episodes live... They get the episodes in real time, and then I think they air on PBS like nine months later. First and 20. Slant route caught. They get that yardage back to the 38-yard line. Catch there made by... 
Herc Merritt, his first touch of the game. Brings up second and about nine. Yeah, that was one of that stop future Doctor Seuss live action films. Guarantano has to avoid the sack. He does, and he's going to look to run. Now he throws it away. Hit as he throws it. Incomplete. He was out of the pocket. The ball reached the line of scrimmage. No ground on the play. Nice pressure there by Memphis. I'm here. Happy Easter. How's it going, Big Tiger? Happy Easter to you, too. Was that Vinny Pally's son? They're related, yeah. They are related. Yeah, there. It, it is the son. It is the son. It is the sun. All right. They don't want to get a play up for the two-minute warning. We'll see if they do. Two, one, and they do get a play up for the two-minute warning. Third and nine. Angle route, and it's thrown well behind his target. Incomplete pass. Fourth and nine, and the Roughnecks have a decision to make. have a decision to make they're in no man's land fourth and nine from a similar spot last time they punted it we'll see what they do here yeah I, I, I don't know what I don't know which way he leans I have no clue I haven't seen I haven't seen this video since the, I, I haven't seen this video since the um, since the story I did um, besides the ones people sent to me uh, the people who posted the, the person who posted a message for from yesterday must have been playing too many Super Mario games pretty much <laughs> Do I have a fan on? No, I do not. No, there is, um... Might be cars outside? Might be the cars outside. I don't have a fan on. Santa Claus movies are fine. Imagine being an elementary school teacher who shows live-action Can the Hat movie to students. <laughs> yeah, that is literally, like... It is literally a PG-13 movie. That should not have been PG. That should have been PG-13. There are so many sexual innuendos that were, like, very obvious in that movie, too. <laughs> Like, it is not, like, there are certain books that are very, or movies that are very faithful to the, the book. Can the hat, the cat shows up, the cat cleans up, that part they got right, and everything else is wrong. <laughs> everything else is, is, but it is a hysterical movie. Like, if you've never seen it, like, go into it not as a Cat in the Hat adaptation. Go into it as a Cat in the Hat, like, just a comedy with with the raunchy Cat in the Hat. Go into go into it with that. You know, I saw Cat in the Hat when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. I loved it. They don't... They... They... Basically, there, there is a... Do they say any cuss words? Um, they borderline. They borderline. Um, they do... Um, there is one there there is a joke in there where um Cat in the Hat looks at a rake and says dirty ho. There is there is that. And they also um um there is a joke they make where the the vehicle initials Spell out S L U T. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do say they do say son of a, and then they bleep it out. Yeah, there there is an erection joke there. There's there's a lot of a lot of dirty jokes in there. Yeah, well, Ken Jennings said as as like the answer to a question because he thought that was the answer to a question. This is they play into it. They play into it. The Homer Simpson abuse with the angers of Frank Rimes. You know, that's not a bad comparison. That's not a bad comparison. Yeah, um, we'll see what the Roughnecks do here. Fourth and nine, they punted it last time, but now they're down by two scores. They do get the ball to start the half. Should know, it'll lead a 56 all. Now they're kicking the field goal, but then what? 55 yards. Kick is up, and it is straight enough. It is long enough. It's good enough. Raises the question why you didn't kick the field goal before? From the same yard line? From the same side of the field? But Houston's on the board. Houston is on the board. NFL timing rules are in effect now. 15-3. Who 
was the worst celebrity host for Jeopardy? Oh, man. The worst one... It's probably Dr. Oz. Dr. Oz was probably the worst. He was very unnatural and also, like, just a snake oil salesman doing posting for Jeopardy felt, like, was terrible. Honestly, like, obviously it would not have happened. Um, the, the best host, legitimately, was Aaron Rodgers. What timing rules? So, basically, the clock always runs in the UFL, even on the clue passes. Inside two minutes, it doesn't. You know, Ken Jennings is great. Way better than, than Mahim. Way better than Balak. Yeah, Balak was not very good. Jennings knows the game. He, he paces it very well. He's so much better. Yeah, he's a natural fit. He's a natural fit. Um, but, uh, yeah. Ken Jennings is really good. The best celebrity host, honestly, besides Ken, was Dr. Was Not Dr. Oz. That, that's not what I meant. Um... No, Dr. Oz was worse. Aaron Rodgers was the best. He had the natural cadence down. LeVar, I, I expected more out of LeVar. I expected a bit more. He was very slow with how he read. And the basically, the, the, the thing with Jeopardy with the host is that you need to be able to control the game and get through the board. If you can't get through the board, usually that's an indication of the, of the host not doing a good job. And there were so many times with LeVar and some of these hosts where they couldn't get through the board because the host was too slow. Score the Purdue game... We were all tied up last I checked at 56 all. I have Tennessee in my final four. I have Tennessee in my final four. Now it's 58 all with five minutes left. Will Turt Ferguson host Jeopardy? <laughs> it's got a funny hat. It's got a funny hat. Funniest sports comedy. Oh, there's some good ones. Um, I'm trying to think of the funniest one. I think the funniest sports comedy. I'm all inside the parts. All right, let me turn that game on. Let me turn that game on. I got the Brewers Mets as my baseball game on, but yeah, I do know he blocks a lot of people. I don't block anyone. I mean, besides like the the, the bots that do like like watch the game here or like send picks it or like picks in bio. But other than those, like I don't block anyone. But I know people have um have tweeted at at me that they've been blocked by him when they called him out on his plagiarism, so. I mean, Illinois had a great season. It was more of just the way it happened. 30 nothing run. I've never seen anything like it in an Elite Eight game. All right, we're going to extras in the Pirates game. If Aaron Rodgers didn't go off the wall, would he have been the Jeopardy host after retirement? No, I think they still would give it to Ken Jennings. I think it would make Ken Jennings. But he did a great job. Kick field at the 13-yard line. It's taken out to the 30. Got some room to the 35. Hurdles a guy. Stays in bounds. Out of bounds at the 40-yard line. So Memphis. Good field position to start this drive at the 40. They've done very well so far offensively. Two touchdowns. Let's see if they can get one before the half. What games do I have on? I've got the Tennessee-Purdue game, I've got the Marlins-Pirates game, and I've got the, um, obviously the UFL game. Favorite golfer? Um, Tiger. I love Tiger. Golf's just better when Tiger's in it. Golf's just better when Tiger's in it. The honest way I saw was Ruby Gilman, Teenage Kraken. You're like one of five people to see that movie. <laughs> that did terribly at the box office. That was like the biggest loss ever for that company. Like the least the least grossing movie ever. You're like one of five people to see that movie. First and 15, false start. Should Jordan Tamu get released? What are your thoughts? Released? He was the offensive player of the year last year for DC. Why would he get released? He was he didn't have a good game today, obviously. That that pick that pick on the out route was terrible, but. Should he get released? No. He was... He had a bad game. He had a bad game. He was the best player on DC last year. One of them, at least. Out route, Inkley pass a bit too far out in front for the receiver. Second 15. Big stat for this one so far. Daywood Davis. Five catches for Memphis. They're really trying to get him involved. 
Yo, Joran Tamu should not be released. Trust me, I've seen some crappy quarterbacks in the spring league. Tamu's not one of them. Yeah, Drew Carey got a lot of flack because he replaced Bob Barker. And Bob Barker is a legend. But Drew Carey's phenomenal. Drew Carey's really, really good. Santa Claus movies are fine. Santa Claus movies are fine. All right, second 15. Four wide. They send four. Cookus looking. Going to dump it off. Caught by the running back, Victor. And Victor goes down to the 37. And Houston has a timeout. Does Houston consider using one here to try to get the ball back? It's third and long. They are not using a timeout. I, I would be using one here from Houston, trying to get this ball back. Because if you figure third and 12, Memphis is going to be throwing the ball. You figure if it's an incomplete pass, it stops the clock. I'd be trying to get the ball back here. Oh, just supposed to be half an hour. You got McTaters. Oh, go McTaters in. Go McTaters. I've not seen any movies in theaters in 2024. I've not seen any yet. So Houston not to get timeout. Memphis, third and 12. They send five. Cookus hit on the throw. It is... Caught! Still gets it off somehow, and it's caught the 47-yard line. Catch there made by Jonathan Adams. That'll stop the clock for the moment while they reset college timing rules in effect. Low hit there. With 49 seconds, first down in plus territory yet again. The 47-yard line. Cookus. Look it. Sideline. Open. I'm not sure he got the second foot in. I don't think that one he got the second foot in. Don't think that one, he, he did not, no. Couldn't quite pull up a poly on that one. Could not do it. Lee Morris, the intended target, looking for his first catch of the season. He didn't get one foot in. He didn't even get one foot in. Oh, I gotta check out that documentary perfect bit. I gotta check out that documentary. I love those docs on game shows. I love those. Um, there was one on the, the British millionaire that was the, um, that cheated to win a million bucks. That was crazy. Back in like 2001. That was insane, that story. Second and ten. They send four. Cookus dumps it off to Victor. Victor spins out of the tackle. And will trip it again at two. Becomes a gain at 90. I figure Memphis will take their second time out. And they will. There is Victor. A bowling ball. Tough to bring him down. USFL teams knew that very well last year when he was with the Generals. The worst movie I ever saw as a kid. Ooh. As a kid. That's a good question. Like, I, I think of a lot of bad movies I've seen now, but, like, the worst as a kid, where I just walked out of the theater thinking this was terrible, I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. Someone said the Grinch... Wait, the, the Roughneck... Wait, what? Oh, oh Roughneck's injury, injury timeout. So, Nesmith is not the burn timeout. There was an injury timeout. Gabriel Sewell Jr., the starting middle linebacker on Houston. So, Houston has no timeouts left. Again, it was an injury timeout. Is Hell's Kitchen good for kids? No. No. Gordon Ramsay curses all the time. He's yelling. He's yelling all the time. So someone said that the Grinch Christmas movie, that was not a good movie. It, the, the Grinch Christmas movie was actually... The camera angles are nauseating. And like, there's not a single likable character in that movie. You're rooting for the Grinch. That movie, you're rooting for the Grinch because everyone in Whoville is horrible. Did any players in NFL Europe ever have a success making the transition to the NFL? Oh yeah, Jake DeLome. Jake DeLome um, played in NFL Europe. Third and one. Kokos, they send four. Kokos, deep shot on third and one. End zone! No flag. And you figure if they're taking a deep shot on third and one, it means they're going to go for it on fourth and one. David Davis, the intended target. Filippo wants a flag. Not going to get it. Looked pretty clean to me from this angle, honestly. There wasn't a whole lot of contact. Maybe because they didn't turn his body, but... Still make a play on the ball. Is UFL more XFL than USFL? No, it's it's the same. Um, four XFL teams. Four, five XFL. It's complicated. Well, now they're going to kick the field goal. Why, why would you not run the... I don't know why you wouldn't run the ball. On it's a 56-yard try. Why why would you take a deep shot on third down and kick the field goal fourth down? 
This is this is confusing to me. This is very confusing. 56 yard try. Kick is up. It is long enough, but it's wide right from the start. No good. And now Houston's got a good field position. That made no sense to me. So you're taking a deep shot on third, and then you're kicking on fourth? Why why not run the, you have two timeouts. Why not run the ball on third? Get the first. So now Houston's got the ball the 45 yard line. We know the kicker can hit from 55. And now they can make it a one score game with a field goal here. That made no sense to me. Questionable coaching on both sides in this. Um, so basically, it's complicated. There's five XFL teams, three USFL, but the Roughnecks are basically the gamblers from last year. So that's basically what it comes down to. The Roughnecks are basically the gamblers roster, but they're just taking on the Roughnecks name. What was the meaning of life? We watched football, and then we watched the, the Chiefs win again. That's the meaning of life. That's what football's all about, Charlie Brown. First down the 46-yard line. 14 seconds. Guarantano sacked on the play! Blindside sack! He goes down, and Houston's just going to let the clock run out, so no harm done. Sack on the play by Maximilian Roberts. He had Houston as no timeout, so they can't do anything. And that will take us to the half. 12-minute halftime break, and Houston... Nothing doing this half. It's been all Memphis. Trying to give the USFL another win, although technically, again, asterisks next to it. This Roughnecks team is basically the Gamblers. You have five XFL team names, three USFL team names, four USFL rosters, four XFL rosters. That's that's what it is, yes. Yep, that's a good way of putting it. Some this camera is glitching. It's Harry Douglas trying to give this interview. All right, so halftime break. 15-3. Let's see. Let me adjust the... Uh, what am I adjusting here? Here we go. Half time. There we go. Yeah, Purdue is up by three right now. Maybe your team is a bit ahead. All right, let me put a poll in there. Who do you think wins this game? Again, if you're a member, thank you so much for being a member. You get a lot of cool perks. Play your name in the NFH video, members only QA streams, and you get to use emojis in the chat. Like the showboat logo and the roughnecks logo. Again, next week, we've got three games that we're doing. Again, I want to do all four today. I couldn't do it. Um the the um my alarms didn't go off. So but we are doing this one. Jason Delay at second spot. Ono Cruz scores. Yeah. Look, if you allow a run in extra innings, it's not the end of the world. Two runs is where it gets dicey. Because you start with a runner on second. So, it's 1-2 count. As long as you get Hayes out right here, you're good. If NC State wins, will they have a good chance of being Purdue or Tennessee? Or is there no chance? Look, if you make the final four, there's always a chance. NC State's beaten a lot of really good teams to get to this point. Phantom Menace is not a good movie. Phantom Menace, it's, it's all political talk. Okay, pop fly, get this out. Or did that hit oh that oh that took a bad bounce. Phantom Menace is all it's all political talk and bad acting and Jar Jar Binks is terrible. The pod racing scene is cool, the end fight scene is cool. Everything else is is not good. It's 20 minutes of oh my god, this is Star Wars. This is awesome. And then a hundred minutes of this is terrible. The Simpsons parody of Phantom Menace was great. Cars 3 is way better than Cars 2. Cars 2 was so bad they didn't acknowledge Cars 3. Or Cars 2 was so bad they didn't acknowledge any Cars 3. Cars 3 is a great, is a good movie about, even if the ending's a bit weird. Cars 3 is a really good movie about what happens when you get up there in age and you have to retire and you realize you're not as good anymore. Cars 2 is, we're a spy movie. Azan White with a tour. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it, man. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, what's the over-under on the range for the UFL this year? I would say 1.3 million per game. I would say 1.3 million. Yeah, Cars 2 with guns. Cars 2 is a spy movie. Hang on. Let me get to adjust the um, everything here. Thank you so much again, Azan. Really appreciate it. Who do I think finishes last in the AFC South? Oh, wow. That is not what I meant to do. Who finishes last in the AFC South? Um, 
I'm going to say the Colts. I don't think they really improved this offseason. And obviously, I don't know what the QB situation is going to be. Obviously, Anthony Richardson's the one, but he's got an injury history. I'm not sure he can survive the full season. Yeah, they have Flacco, but who knows with Flacco? Who knows? The Cars 2 is basically just made our tall tales, but let's make it a 90-minute movie. All right, base is loaded. 3-2 count. Pirates up 8-7. How Train and Dragon? The first one was great. I love the first one. First one was awesome. Who's the best NFL team if Mahomes was not a QB? Mahomes was... So take off Mahomes on the Chiefs. Who's the best team? The Niners. Are the Bears improving? Absolutely. I love what they did this offseason. They got some good weapons at receiver. I love the Keenan Allen move. Um, obviously, they're going to get Caleb Williams, who's buried by default in Justin Fields because... Fields has no pocket presence. Is the AFC South going to be a Houston Jacksonville dogfight? I don't. I don't think Jacksonville's even close to Houston. I gotta be honest. I don't think Houston's even or Jacksonville's even close to Houston. Tennessee, if Will Levis plays well, will be in it. But I really don't think we're close. I really don't think we're close. I think Houston is way better. Your car story is about McQueen being past the prime. That's a great message. It's a great message. Your cars two and brave. I think cars two. We're like, okay, look, Cars is really for merchandise. But then Brave came out. I was like, oh, um, maybe Pixar doesn't have it anymore. It used to be a surefire thing. Okay, now it's 9-7 Pirates. Now you can be concerned. Now you can be concerned. I haven't seen Mitchell's Rustle Machine, so I've heard very good things about it. I know it's on Netflix. Big Hero 6 is great. I love that one. Is CJ Stroud a good QB? No. He's a great QB. <laughs> He's a great QB. Like, he is borderline top five QB in football right now. He's incredible. CJ Stroud is amazing. And I'm so upset that, barring realignment, where the, I need the NFL to go to 36 teams, so it goes East, Central, West, 666, so that Houston goes in the West and we go to the Central, so we don't have to play him twice a year for the next 15 years. Oh, no, Monopoly is way more recognizable than Truth Slayer. It's, it's the most recognizable board game of all time. Yeah, the animation's always great in Pixar. You can never fault the animation in Pixar. The stories for some of them, like Good Dinosaur, I mean, animation was stunning. Like, the backgrounds were jaw-dropping. They, like, the character animation, like, oh, this doesn't really fit. And then the story's like, oh, this doesn't work. What do I give a Trevor for C.J. Stroud? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, considering the fact... Are we counting rookie contracts into the mix? Are we counting, like, like if you get CJ Stroud, you have him on a rookie deal. She, Trevor's entering his fourth season, so we have to pay him soon. CJ Stroud is entering his second. So if we're doing it like that, yes. Would I give up Trevor for CJ? Oh, man. I'm, I would, man, that is, yeah, it would make the podcast a lot less fun, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, that is, that's killing me, but I would have to say yes. I would have to say yes, and I love Trevor. He's a top 10 quarterback in this league. I love the guy. But even if we're not counting contracts into the mix, oh, man. I would have to say yes on that. It's killing me. It's absolutely killing me. But I would do it. Movies I personally do not like that contrast with everyone else. Phantom Thread is awful. And they got nominated for an Oscar for Best Picture. I'm like, the acting is great. The costume design is great. It's incredible. The music is great. Nothing happens in that movie. The story sucks. The story's terrible. I'm like, what happens? Nothing happens in the movie. Like, Phantom Thread got like a unanimous praise. I'm like, what the? This movie's terrible. Like, it's artistically great, but it's a terrible movie. Um, so yeah, probably that. So what, what is... Like, nothing happens in Phantom Thread. That movie has 91% on Rotten Tomatoes. Critical acclaim. It got nominated for Best Picture. 
Phantom Thread's finely woven narrative filled out nicely by humor. There, there was nothing funny in that movie. I didn't laugh once. There, there was nothing funny. It was a, apparently a comedy? If anyone's seen Phantom Thread and, 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 and wants to... Yeah. I've not seen Babylon. I know that there is a scene where an elephant poops on a guy in the first 10 minutes. I do know that. I've not seen Babylon. All I know about Babylon is that it's directed by the same guy that did Whiplash and La La Land and First and First Man, and it got terrible ratings. But it's very divisive. Oh, Tennessee has to foul. Okay, five-point game. It looks like Purdue's going to the Final Four. Ratatouille, Disney should make Ratatouille 2. I mean, that, that's a movie that could use the sequel. Inside Out 2, I'm excited for that. I'm going to see that in theaters. Is CJ the next Montana? I've always heard that CJ's like Joe Montana. I don't think it was the next Joe Montana. I mean, that's that's high praise, but he's good. He's good. I'm not willing to say he's the next Joe Montana just yet, but he's good. Yeah, that 7-Eleven drink is the most... Hot dog flavored sparkling water is the most... I mean, I don't like sparkling water as it is, but that's the most late 90s, early 2000s. Everything's extreme skater board drink on the beach. Ba basically, hot dog flavored sparkling water. If the TV show Rocket Power was a drink, that's what that is. If you if you watch the show Rocket Power on Nickelodeon, if the show Rocket Power was a drink, and that's one of the shows that, like you like as a kid, and then you re watch it later, and it's like, wait a second, nothing happens in this movie. They just... They just... Um, Surf, and they are at the, the shack. Nothing happens. It's not a good show. But it was cool as a kid. It's the most 90s show ever. Why was Haskins terrible? Um, oh, a lot of different reasons. Lack of maturity was one of them. Um, there was also just... He wasn't very mobile. And, like, it, it was a detriment to him. In terms of just pocket presence. Too many sacks. And it didn't really do a lot down the field. Well, here's the thing. They need to make Ratatouille 2. Maybe not just as a story, but just so that they can make the movie called Ratatouille. And the 2 is a, is the number 2. So it would look like... like it would look like this. They need to do that. That's the only reason you create Ratatouille 2, is to call it Ratatouille. If you don't do that, if they make a Ratatouille sequel and they don't call it that, fire everyone. I mean, Disney's already firing everyone, but fire everyone again if they don't do that. <laughs> All right, 71% of you riding with the showboats to win this game. The Monopoly movie? I didn't even know they were making a Monopoly movie. I did not know they were making a Monopoly movie. Yeah, Madam Web, I heard bad things. Every, every Sony Spider-Man movie that is not Spider-Man related is bad. Every single one. Like, obviously, Spider-Man movies are great, but the ones that are not Spider-Man about, like Venom, like Madam Web, like, yeah. Um, Morbius. Yeah. Yeah. Fan four stick. <laughs> Fantastic four stick or whatever it is. Alright. So, we're going to start this third quarter. Roughnecks get the ball to start. A bizarre first half. Alright, it's going to be a busy week of live streams. I'm looking forward to it. Good to be back in the swing of things. I love live streaming with you guys. I love it. We are back in the swing of things, man. We are back in the swing of things. Tom Holland's 27. I feel like I have achieved nothing in life. The fact that Tom Holland and I will be the same age in four months. I feel like I have achieved absolutely nothing. It's so bad. It's so bad. It's Morbin time. Yep, it is Morbin time. I love that part. <laughs> love that part of Morbius. <laughs> like, you know Bad on Web is bad? When there was a joke at the Oscars by John Mulaney about how bad it was. <laughs> she was in the Amazon <laughs> researching spiders. Oh yeah, they, they, they really misled people with, with Venom. 
They really misled people. Roughnecks down 15-3, looking to do anything offensively. Yet Purdue is winning. Purdue wins the game, what's it, 72-66? All right, here we go. Kickoff field at the 15-yard line. We're underway in the second half to the 35, and we'll be down at the 42-yard line after the extra extension. So Houston ball to 42, first down. No, August 1st. August 1st is his birthday. August 1st. Which is, is awesome this year. Like, like, I'm looking forward to it. Like, not that I'm always like, looking forward to my birthday, but it's like, this year, August 1st, we got the Hall of Fame game. So we're starting we're starting off. Favorite thing to eat at Jags games? Um, have you seen the reports on the Jags concessions? I don't really get stuff to eat at Jags games. <laughs> pizza's fine. There. Most pizza's fine. Um, popcorn's good. But... Other than that, I don't, like, Jags concessions are not great. Handoff gain of one, second and nine. The best concessions by far, UBS Arena. If you ever been to UBS Arena where the Islanders play, oh, the concessions there are phenomenal. Yeah, Purdue going to the Final Four. Purdue going to the Final Four. So didn't get didn't get mad at Sony for Venom. I mean, they don't. Disney doesn't own Spider Man. They can't really do anything about it. Second down, we get some pre snap movement. So Houston going backwards yet again. Second and fifteen now. Yes, she is. Yes. Next Monday, very important day. Will I watch the event? Um, I mean, I'm going to um. I'll be at the Final Four. I'll be at the championship game. If all goes according to plan. Yeah, no, I won't Ayuk badly. Look, if, if they offer 17, if we have to give a pick 17 and Zay Jones for Brand Ayuk, yeah, I'm taking that every day of the week. I don't know why Trent Bulky didn't. I know he costs a lot of money, but it's worth it. Keen of three on the run brings up third and 11. Biggest overpaid bust in Jags history? Ooh. Man, take your pick on that one. Nick Foles, $88 million to start four games and go 0-4. Dumb decisions bid for the Red Sox on the 10th last night against Seattle. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. I got to check it out. Kaylin Clark hosting SNL. If they win, honestly, I could see it. If they win, I could see it. If they win it all. They have to win it all. If they win it all, I could see it. Third down, they send four. Because she can't act. She did State Farm commercials. Third down, throws on the run, incomplete. They're going to go three and out. No flag on the play. Tight defense there, coverage. Quinton Meeks, the former Jaguar. Speaking of former Jaguars, he was a Stanford guy. Undrafted free agent. Uh, highest paid undrafted free agent in Jags history. Didn't do a whole lot in Jacksonville, but he is catching on the UFL, and he's making the play there. Fourth down, they're going to have to pump this one away. And the Marlins officially lose. Ay, ay, ay. Four game sweep in the hands of the Pirates. Okay, now it's time to panic. You know, Ayuk is 100% worth the 17th overall pick. Even if you have to give him a, a second contract. Four the 10. Punt is blocked! The punt is blocked! Houston recovers it at the 47-yard line. So it's going to be Memphis ball at the 47. From bad to worse. Could Trevor host SNL? He has no charisma. Trevor cannot act to save his life. Have you ever heard him trying to give a pep talk? He can't act. No, Trevor Lawrence could not host SNL. No, he, he would be terrible hosting SNL. The only way to host SNL is if they win a Super Bowl, but even that, I, I I don't see how it happens. That punt block was task failed successfully. <laughs> I mean, it's still Memphis ball. It's still Memphis ball. You know, in similar tournament, yeah. I mean, that just ended, so Purdue going to the Final Four. I didn't see that with Tennessee and Virginia. I did not see that. The prevailing core, I did not see that. I got to catch up on a lot of stuff. I got to catch up on a lot. Let's turn the Red Sox Mariners game. Can I show the game on screen? I cannot. Oh, can I edit the game on screen? No, I cannot edit or show anything on, on stream. Handoff, nothing doing there. I will say Houston's run defense has not been great. Um, or Houston's run defense has been great, I should say. Darius Victor, not doing a whole lot today. Favorite college team? I mean, for other sports besides football, high point, but we don't have a football team. So favorite team is Florida. Travis Kelsey already hosted SNL. And he was good. Travis Kelsey hosted SNL. UFL games go fast. Yeah, the, the clock rules are different in the UFL. That's why. The games go under three hours most of the time. Because the clock runs on equally passes. 
Four wide, two on the near side, two on the far side. Takes a snap, they send five on Mill, and that's intercepted! Huge play for the Roughnecks! Roughnecks looking to go with the 45 to the 50, down the 49-yard line. Cookus makes a mistake there, picked off by Ruben Foster! Picked off by Ruben, first turnover of the game for the Roughnecks defense. And finally, they get something going. Maybe the most naturally talented player in the UFL on the defensive side. Reuben Foster gets the interception, the former 49er in the first round pick out of Bama. 10 gets intercepted by 10. Unbelievable pick. Nice athleticism there by Foster. So we first down the 49 yard line. Will that be the spark that Houston needs? Hand off to the outside. Pushed out of bounds on the 47 yard line. That is. That is. TJ Pledger. Gain a two. Second and eight, the 47. What I'll do after the game? I mean, I'm going to eat dinner. I'm going to eat pizza after the game. But um, we'll, we'll do overtime. We'll do overtime. Why not? You focus on Duke at the top of the hour? I don't blame you one bit. Either way, UNC fans are in hell. <laughs> one, of the, one of the teams in the triangle is going to go to the final four. Second and eight. Play action. Guarantano. Looking. Sacked to the 49-yard line. Excuse me, Guarantano has been benched. Guarantano is not in the game. It is Reed Sinet, the former San Diego quarterback. Former Dolphin as well. So Guarantano out after a first half where they did nothing. Got three first downs. So Reed Sinet, the new quarterback in the game. Did the NFL adopt the tens of a second rule? I didn't say anything about that, no. I don't think that passed. Or they might table it for a future meeting. Will the UFL game clock rules work in the NFL? No. No, they'd be terrible for the NFL. Be absolutely terrible for the NFL. Speaking of which, I totally forgot to adjust the clock here. Sinet looking. Overshot. Hit his receiver. So the good field position. All for nothing. Anthony Ratliff Williams, the intended target. But still just three first downs on the game for Houston. Yeah, there's going to be vids tomorrow. There's going to be vids tomorrow. Um... I tried to get a video today. I, I couldn't do it. Um, and thank you for tuning in, Pikachu. Um, I just crashed. I crashed. I, I couldn't do a video. Uh, there will be a video tomorrow about something Vikings right from 1980s. I was supposed to do that today, but I just couldn't get it out in time. The punt here on 4th and 12. We feel it by Memphis at the 7-yard line. Taking to the 10. Nice move to cut up the middle down to the 20-yard line. So, 13-yard return on the play. By Elder. By Jerry Elder. Memphis ball to 20. We're going to rebound after that interception. How long do you think the UFL will last? I mean, I hope until... I hope forever. I hope they last forever. I would hate that if they don't. If they don't. Because I love these. Have I seen Dave Volsky's latest video? Uh, I've not. No. Let me check. Oh, they have, oh, they have, oh, all the music? Ooh. Oh, okay. That intrigues me. That intrigues me a lot. Does Pat McAfee have too much freedom from the sports world? I mean, look, I have the freedom to do whatever I want, so I can't really be, I, I'd be hypocritical if I said he has too much freedom. Um, but then do what I do. Yeah, tomorrow's Spider-Man's favorite holiday, April Fool's Day. April Fool's Day. <laughs> look for your look in your drinks for two ice cubes instead of one. If I saw a van with free pizza, would I have it? No. I, I need I need to look at photos of the pizza before I would go to the van. Could Jerry Jones host SNL? No, he is like he would his comedic time would be terrible. XFL needs to fix the game so there's more scoring. High scoring in this week with 40 points. I mean there's the games are always low scoring to start with spring football, and then they get more high scoring as the season goes on. Hosting SNL is overrated. I don't think pe most people outside the East Coast even watch or care. I mean, 
Look, SNL skits get a million views the moment they go live. So basically, yeah, you might you might not get a lot of a live audience necessarily, but but you're gonna get a live audience. You're gonna get like four million people watching live. And on top of that, you're going to get people watching afterwards on YouTube. How's it going, Bobby? Happy Easter to you. How much is Everbank's hot chocolate? One dollar did suddenly go up to one fifty with no explanation. <laughs> That's a great callback to the Patriots Colts chocolate gate video. <laughs> they don't sell hot chocolate at games. Sam Weiss day tomorrow. Yep, there you go. Another great callback. Another great callback. Um, where he actually tried the April Fool's prank where he pretended he was quitting. <laughs> no, SL is not live on all time zones. It is not live on all time zones. I don't get it live in Phoenix. I do not get it live in Phoenix. Here come the firefighters. Hope everything is okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm right by like a, an interstate, so. So I hear that all the time. All right, as a reminder, if you're a member, thank you so much. You can join support using those emojis. Um, do all that. Thoughts on Pat McAfee show? I'm not a fan. Not, not a fan. I don't really like McAfee a lot. I think he's very, very abrasive. Very abrasive. Will Chris Farley still be doing SNL? No. I mean, no. He, he's, he, he would be moving on to other stuff. He would have, he would have outgrown us, I know. You might think he get himself canceled someday. Um, wouldn't shock me if he flies a bit too close to the sun. Because he already has flown a bit too close to the sun at times. Kokos tries to escape the sack, fires as he's hit. Nice effort to try and get the one-hand grab. And then into the bench he goes. He's okay. But Pale goes down equally past second and ten. That bench is awfully close to the sideline. Which NFL players look like... Which What NFL player looks like he bullies kids out of their Easter eggs? <laughs> Pick any offensive lineman. Do you think KFC picking April 1st introduced Sauce Nuggets and then some other new menu items is a bad idea? Very bad idea. Very bad idea. Although April Fool's Day is a great day to experiment with ideas. I will say that. April Fool's Day... Like, you can always, if you're a business... I would experiment with, like... If you don't know what the reception is going to be to something, April Fool's Day is a great day to launch something. Because if, it, if people like it, you're like, oh, this is good. If it, if they don't like it, you can say, oh, April Fool's. Doesn't count. Like, it's a genius day to do it. You know, I visited the, the SNL studio. In, in, um, I didn't visit it in 2008, but I visited, I think, 2009, 2010. Torgan said they had an overflow stage for Farley since he break furniture. <laughs> I mean, he did break the table in the Man Down by the River sketch. He did break the table. That was not supposed to happen. Kukas steps up, runs for a game of three. This looks very awkward. There's two sets of hash marks on this field. Would Nirvana still be around if Kurt Cobain was still with us? Yes, they would still be around. Yeah, Google's April Fool's jokes were good. First game today was won by the Brahmas over the Defenders. The yeah, NFL adopted the XFL kickoff rules. One asked questions of what other rules from other leagues might work in the NFL. Yeah, the clock rule wouldn't. The transparency they use with, with a judge, super challenge, that could work. Third and 12. Four wide. Three on the other side, one on the far side. Cookus drops back. He's pressured. Has to escape the pocket. Going to fire on the run. It is incomplete. It's a quick three and out for the Showboats offense. Houston's even gets a stop. Save Surratt, the intended target. So both teams straight and punts. You know, first game was won by the Brahmas. On April 20th, should fast food restaurants sell food laced with weed? I think you could get... I think that's illegal. I think that's very illegal. And they're actually going to call a penalty on the Roughnecks. Illegal contact. So, five-yard penalty. So, move it up to the 28-yard line. I don't want to make an April Fool's video. Um, I'm mean, putting out a video tomorrow, but I don't know if it's going to be an April Fool's video. Probably not. Do the Subway Surfers bit again. No matter how bad your videos are, I'm never going to give you up. I'm And I'm never going to let you down. So first down on the illegal contact penalty. Houston has a super challenge. They're not going to use it. First down the 28-yard line. 
What year I think Sean Taylor would have retired if he didn't pass away? 2015. I, I would guess 2015. But now we have some movement, so back him up five. This has been a laundry fest today. Get those flag emojis out if you remember. Chrissy, Adam Zucker potentially replaced James Brown for the NFL today. He, James Brown's staying on NFL today, which is awesome. I love the guy. Um, Jonathan Abe, um, Adam's getting cold. Um, Adam Zucker, yeah, I think that would make the most sense. Announce a partnership with DG on April 1st. <laughs> yeah, that would go over well. He won a WrestleMania epic called Colossal Tussle instead. Oh, wow. That, WrestleMania is a way better name. It's a way better name. Some more movement. Oh, my goodness. April Fool's Dumb Decision. I've debated doing that. I've debated doing a Dumb Decision for April Fool's where it's... A team is down by eight, they score a touchdown, and they only go for one. But it was back in the days of the... There wasn't a two-point conversion. So another delay of game penalties. So three straight penalties. Oh, man. The flags are flying today. This has been a sloppy game so far. First and 20 now at the 13-yard line. Backing up. Cookus dumps it off to his running back. It's caught by Victor at the 19 down to the 20-yard line. Getting a 7 on the play. Do I like wrestling? I like, I'm not really a huge fan. I mean, I probably watch a bit more of it was like over the air, but. Oh, because it's all scripted. Rich Kodai. I was thinking like Patriots Saints 86, like that, or something like that. That'd be funny. I'll probably I might do that and then like to put out a real video later in the day. I might do that. No, no, no laundry on that one. Just an injured. Roughneck. Injured Roughneck on the field. That is number 33. JT Tyler, starting linebacker. All right, so let me just check how we're doing streaming-wise. We got 67 people in the stream, which is awesome. Thank you so much. Let me check how the other streams are doing. So I just want to see. Roughneck Showboats. Let's see. Let's filter sort by live. Um, we have... Okay, illegal stream, illegal stream, illegal stream, illegal stream, my stream. Am I the only one doing the game? Hang on, we got one, okay, we got we got some other people doing it. Um, they have about three people in the stream. We got another person doing it with 17. So I think we are the number one. We got another one with three. Oh my god, we have we have this we have a one from we have an illegal stream, but this this one's hysterical. We have an illegal stream um by a channel called U Channel Sport, and they use the wrong logo for the Memphis Showboats, and they use the United Football League logo from the the two from 2009. Completely different league. Happy Easter, happy early Sam Wesh Day. Thank you so much, C2 man. Happy Easter to you. Who is the 1980s Trevor Lawrence? Um, what do you mean? I don't know what you mean by that. Like, like, in terms of play style? In terms of... Like, I, I feel like him and Boomer Esiason are pretty similar in terms of how they play. Yeah, I think we are the most watched... We are the most watched stream by a lot. So thank you guys so much for all the love and support. Really appreciate it, guys. Really, really appreciate it. We're over 70 people in this room right now. This is awesome. This is awesome. Oh, Rocky Early Leagues. Well, Blossman's one of the best pocket passers in the league. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, not Testaverde. Um, Rocky Early Years, but will become one of the best in the league. Um... Maybe Phil Sims. You know, Phil Sims is not not a bad comparison in that regard. It's Phil Sims, it was rough the first like four years with Sims. He wanted to get traded in '83. It was it was rough. Maybe Phil Sims. I believe the Giants should trade for T Law and the Jags get Dale Jones, so I support that. Um <laughs> It would need to be one of those trades where we also get a first round pick attached to it for life. I wish you could do that in the NFL. I wish you could do that. MLS used to do that. 
where they these teams traded international spots, not realizing the importance of them, and they traded them for life. So we'll give you this player, and you get this pick for life. Like I, I would love that. Or second and thirteen after the injury, wheel route incomplete pass Sage threw out the intended target. Brings up third and thirteen. NC State win. They're playing um, in about 20 minutes. NC State's playing Duke in about 20 minutes. Oh, who's going to be the next QB to do 3,750? Um, will be Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, or Jalen Hurts. I would, I would guess Lamar Jackson. I would guess Lamar Jackson. I mean, Trevor's like Manning in the sense that they were hailed as a generational prospect, but that's about where the comparison ends. That's about where the comparison ends. Third and 13, the 30. Kukas. Hit as he throws. Fires caught. First down on the play at the 33 yard line. It's David Davis. His sixth catch of this game. And it's a first down. As a reminder, use my promo code at PrizePix. 100% sponsor match up to 100 bucks. Uh, you, you can bet on the UFL. You can bet overrunners on the UFL. They did not have David Davis today. But that would have been a fun one for receptions. They'll probably add more stuff as the season goes on once we know more about the players. Oh, the women's team. Did they win? Oh, I um I don't know. They're up by 12. Give on the outside. It is a first down for Daywood Davis. Once again getting involved on the action. Gain of 15 yards for Davis. How about David Davis? He is having a phenomenal game today. Been the cog in this offense. His first game ever in the UFL. Was on the Dolphins' 90 man roster last year. First down. Play action. Kokos is a sin five. Kokos steps up in the pocket, and he's going to go down. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. I don't think they're going to call it a sack. But good play by the Roughnecks defense. Ethan Westbrooks, the former Ram. On the stop. Second and ten. Remember that because there was a lot of debate about that final roster spot back in 2014 with him and Michael Sam. What if the Yofel acted like 2001 XFL? Attendance would be... Through the roof, but the quality of play will be garbage. Ten say is five thousand. Is that is that official? I know yesterday Arlington got like seventeen k, which is good. Michigan got nine k, which is about what I expected. They hand off to Victor, nothing doing. Lost a two. They're in twelve. San Antonio looked pretty full. What was the attendance? Is it official? The attendance. It doesn't look like 5K, because Royce Sam is pretty big. It, I, I don't know what the... That doesn't look like 5K. That looks like a bit more than 5K. I mean, they filled up from the on both sides, from the 20 to the 20. That's a low throw, third and 12, and... This long drive, time-wise, for the Roughnecks will end with a punt. The NFL adopt or replace the coin toss with a scramble. I think players would boycott. Players would boycott. Oh, he was the guy that had the injury to get called off. I didn't realize David Davis was the guy that had that was the injury. I remember that that happening. I don't remember that it was Davis. Oh, I did not realize that. Yeah, I, I, I know what I don't think that's five thousand. I would wager eleven K. I would I would say eleven K. That's my guess. Okay, Rice is a pretty big stadium. San Antonio thirteen one six four, that's pretty good. Anything in the five figures is pretty good. Battlehawks are gonna be really, really good. I can I can already tell you that much. They're opening up product for some of these games. Alright, flag on the play. If Phoenix had a UFL team, they'd probably be like the AAF with the hot shots. They'd probably play at Sun Devil. Selfishly, I want them to play Chase Field. Would 2001 XFL work today? No. No, absolutely not. It didn't even work back then. 
It didn't even work back then. The only good thing about the XFL back then was the marketing. The, the marketing was A+. Plus. Everything else was garbage. Okay, so as it stands, punt return to the 22-yard line. The Royals winning 11 nothing. Yeah, the Royals did some nice things this offseason. I could see them being... I don't want to say playoff team, but... Like 77. So offside on Markel Roby is the call. So it brings up 4th and 7 if Memphis wants to redo the punt. I'm, I'm assuming they would. No, 5,000's not good. I But have they announced that it's 5,000? I, I don't see anything on Twitter. No, I'm not going to defend 5,000. 5,000's garbage. But I... Look, we, we saw Orlando Guardians games last year. They did not even draw 5,000. And those games looked abysmal from a tenant standpoint. They drew more than 5K. This doesn't look like 5K. Slide Mem 46, one character to the left. Yeah, I think the, yeah, the scoreboard's a bit... It's a bit off. Wait, they messed up the three-point line on the women's side? Oh my goodness. There's been a lot of controversy. Was like, Don't feel that punt. It's going to go into the end zone for a touchback. So Houston ball the 25-yard line and touchbacks to get taken out to the 25. So ends up not working on Memphis server to re-kick this one. But there was another flag. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Get those flag emojis out. Yeah, because you had the, the whole incident that happened with the Notre Dame player who, where the nodes ring. And she was wearing it all season, and they decided in the Sweet 16 to finally enforce it. Holy on the receiving team. So 10-yard penalty enforced on the touchback. So 15... So they're going to have it at the 15-yard line, not the 25. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I probably guessed about 11K. And they also had the, the official that worked for Chattanooga, or got her... Or that worked the game with Chattanooga, and she got her degree at Chattanooga, and they removed her midway through. Yeah, there's been a lot of controversy with the women's side. That's completely the NCAA is doing. Which is a shame. It's like the fans treat the tournament seriously, but I'm not sure the NCAA does. Oh my god. Yep, yeah, I just... Wow. I cannot believe it. That's insane. How does that... How does that even happen? Because they play... First down. Sinet fires. Caught. And then sent to the 30. Down to the 35. Huge game there by Evans. But what... What I don't get about that is... Um, they played the Sweet 16 there. And there was no issue. You're not replacing the court in between the Sweet 16 and the Elite 8. So how does that happen? Yeah, any after we're gonna get Caitlin Clark. They have the number one pick. They have the number one pick. Houston, same to right, same renovations at Houston. 9,157. Yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. I was gonna say. 9157. That sounds right. So that fire is caught at the 40, down to the 43. Gain of eight. So that looks more comfortable than Guarantano. Wonder if there's gonna be a QB change. The third quarterback for those wondering is Nolan Henderson. So really, there could be a QB controversy. Bruin and Houston, based on how this drive goes. They send five, or five wide, I should say. So net, you just run for the first down. Here's got it, the 45, 50, 45, stays about still going. Downfield block is what the call's going to be. So out of bounds to the 36. The flag will be on Houston for a downfield block, holding on the offense. But it should still be enough for the first down. So I'm going to assume the Bulls will be right around midfield. Oh, holding on the defense. Oh, okay. Holding on the defense. Five-yard penalty added to the run. So first down. Best drive of the game for the Roughnecks. They're at the 31-yard line. Do I know how to fix a car? No. No, I do not. I am... Some people are car people, and then some are god-awful with cars. I am god-awful with cars. Mechanic can tell me anything, and I'll be like, okay, I trust you. <laughs> it's probably not the best thing in the world. 31-yard line. Read. Screen pass. Caught and then falls down. Could have been a nice game of about five. Instead, it's going to be a loss of one. 
Kirk Merritt. Now it's like I said, the end of the quarter. Still 15-3. But Roughnecks start driving. They might have a rhythm going now with Guarantano back in at QB. I don't think it's in the end of the quarter. Were the rules for the US or the UFL? Um, let me get to that. Let me get to that. Let me just adjust the thing. So Guarantano back in there now. Not Sinet. It's 15-3 ball game. Let me adjust the quarter. We get to go. Renegades or Cowboys? <laughs> Do I hate the illegal students trying to trick you? Oh, 100%. Everyone does. They should be they should be banned. They're 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 not Yeah, they those, those are terrible. No one likes those. Will these teams beat CFL teams? I would say yes. I would say yes. Maybe not right now, but as the season goes on, yes. Okay, so UFL rules that are different from the NFL. Touchbacks go out to the 25. Every touchback. Even punts and plays in the end zone the fumble into the end zone rule is gone it just returns to the spot of the fumble fourth and 12 at the 28 yard line instead of onside kicks extra points you go for two points from the one yard line five points from the two or ten from the th or three points from the ten there is no extra point kick you're allowed two forward passes behind the line of scrimmage you have to have two feet in bounds although that's the same as the nfl but it's different from the xfl from last year defensive pass interference unless it's intentional it's 15 yard penalty it's, it's 15 yards that's it it's like college you get one super challenge per game, which means you can challenge anything you want, including a penalty. Over time, if it goes to that, it's a shootout with three plays from the five-yard line. Yeah, now people blaming LOL women for the three-point line is nuts. It, it was probably men that, that did the court, too. It's like, it's probably men that did it, too. It's That's an NCAA issue, and most people in the NCAA are men, so. Like, at, like, the head, so. I mean, you have to remember, this was the same organization that three years ago had the tournament in a bubble in San Antonio and didn't give the women a weight room. How have to remember that. This is the same organization that did not give them a weight room. Which meant that, I think a local gym donated equipment for them to use. Like, they, the NCAA does not value women's sports. Which is a shame. Because women's sports are awesome. And this tournament's been great for the women's side. Will the Super Challenge work in the NFL? Um, I think so, yes. Absolutely. Fourth quarter sports focus on basketball now, so I'll stay with you until the end of the game. Thank you so much, man. 83 people in the stream. And again, NC State Duke happening right now on CBS. 2-2 two -two game there. That one just started. 88%, you run with the showboats. D-Mex were 3-0 last time I checked. I'm not watching the game right now. 3-0 bottom of the fourth. All right. D-Mex, again, don't even tell me Lord has hit a home run. Don't even... Lord has got a, an RB. Oh my god. Lord of Scorial has got another RBI in the first inning. He's got an RBI in every single game in the first inning. It's crazy. Who's my pick? Um, Duke. Who's my pick to win this game? I got Memphis. I got Memphis. But we'll see. But we'll see. Oh, okay, we got these two teams right here. And again, you can see on the bottom line on the ticker, we're doing all the USFL games next week except for the second one. We're not doing the St. Louis game just because I'll be at the Final Four. Second and 11. Final quarter. Play action. Guarantano. Fires. Incomplete receiver was in the area, even though that didn't reach the line of scrimmage. Does men's USA win goal this year in basketball? I, I mean, they're the favorite. I think they do. Yeah. Especially if, if that if they bring their best players, like they're reported to. They've definitely been caught up to. They've definitely been caught up to. I, I will say that. They've definitely been caught up to. Women's USA, they'll blow out everyone. They'll blow out everyone. That'll be fun. Third and 11 now. Four wide one on the far side. Three on the near side. Guarantano. Pressure, dumps it off to his running back, ball is caught at the 25, and down at the 21. Now you have a decision to make here. Fourth and one, you can kick, make it a one-score game. I think you leave the offense out there, though. As Jared gifting a membership. Thank you so, so much. Who's got this one? Um, your pal Al getting a gifted membership. Jared uh, Schrankengast? Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. If I'm not, please let me know. Schrankengast, thank you so much for the donation. Thank you for the membership. 
As a member, you're pal Al, you get a lot of cool perks. Play your name in the end of each video, members on my Q&A streams, and your name, scrolling across the screen, green text next to your name, and gives emojis. They're going for it. Well, not before we have a timeout. The timeout's by the showboats, they have two left. I'm just going to do Jared Estra so it fits. Thank you so much, man. Really, really appreciate it. The showboats have two timeouts left. I totally forgot to adjust the timeout marker. I needed to do that. I totally forgot to do that. Hang on. So Memphis is still right, but Houston is three. Houston is three timeouts, so... Apologies there. And your pal Al getting get to the membership, so... Let me adjust the ticker, which is nice. I can do that. Breaking news, the Jaws have seven primetime games. Oh, God, no. <laughs> I would die. I would, I would just boycott streaming. If they did that. Pronunciation is correct. Nice. Austrian. Yeah, I had a feeling it was it was Central European. It looks Central European. Which means Night Terror. Ooh, that is intimidating. That is intimidating. Yeah, Reggie White played for the Memphis Showboats. Yes, he played for that iteration of the Showboats. Again, the helmets, for those who are joining us, how the case is designed. We have the current teams here. XFL, U, SFL. We have the current teams up here. This Brahmas helmet was designed, custom made, uh, by one of my fans, Wiley Nash. So shout out to him if you're watching. Um... We have the two teams playing up here, highlighted. XFL 2001 helmets. Here are the USFL helmets from the 80s. We also have behind me, the, the middle four are the XFL 2020 teams that no longer exist with us. Um, rest in peace. Um, except for the Wildcats. Don't really care about the Wildcats. And the top row is just a continuation of the USFL from the 80s. This doesn't all fit. Including two General's helmets, a white and a silver edition, because they made two of them. And a Pittsburgh Molars helmet. From the 2023 version of the USFL. Where they switched the color scheme to black and gold to fit Pittsburgh. Meanwhile, three-run home run in the Boston game. Boston being 4-1 on the Mariners. Hey, famous Eagles. Player. Yeah, Reggie White. Yeah. A lot of famous players play in the USFL. They got a lot of talent back in the 80s. Jim Kelly. Steve Young. Doug Flutie. Brian Sipe. Mike Rozier. They got, like... You look at the offense. Like, some of these offensive... Units were better than NFL units, like legitimately. Like some of these running back rooms were stacked. Herschel Walker, obviously. No, there's no helmets missing. There's no helmets missing. I just figured there's no point in putting helmets behind me here because my head is blocking it and the chair is blocking it. Now, Warman was CFL. Warman was CFL. He wasn't uh, USFL. Oh, the original Oakland's out there? Oh, I remember that song, too. I remember that one. All right, so for the one they have a decision to make, I think they go for it here. Memphis called him out just to get everything situated. 7-6 Duke in that game. Yeah, and plus, like, I don't have any other... These are all the helmets I've got for UFL, so... No point in me filling up with NFL helmets. The handoff, there's some pre-snap movement! Pre-snap movement, back him up five, and now I think he kicked the field goal. What helmets are behind me usually? Um, NFL. It depends on it depends on the team's playing. So instead of UFL, it's the teams playing in the game. So when I do NFL streams, I switch it to the teams playing. Because I don't have one of each, I have like ten of each. You Bobby A Bear. So five yard penalty, fourth and six, and now I think you kick. Make it a one score game. They have a decision to make. Guarantano is walking off the field. It looks like they're going to kick the field goal, which makes sense. Again, if this was NFL, where there's no three-point conversion, he'd still go for it here. But here, you kick the field goal. J.J. Molson, he's perfect so far today. One for one. Drilled it from 55. Can he make this one from 40 to make it a one-score game? Bad snap, but kick is perfect right down the middle. Oh, he's got a new song? Ooh, I did not know that. I did not know that. 15-6, the score. Houston gets another field goal, makes it a one-score game, but still struggling to get anything going. A lot of pre-snap penalties today. So 
with that, let's move this over. And get the kickoff ready. Again, uh, thank you guys for tuning in for the stream. It's been a fun, fun stream so far. Again, apologies for the first game. Really, really feel bummed about that, but we're doing this one. We're doing this one. Yeah, by the end of the year three, there were two to three USFL teams that could have won four nine games in the NFL. I agree. I agree. Like they're like the mid eighties bandits were were good. Like the mid eighties bucks were terrible. I legitimately like you think of like like you look at the, the talent they had on that team on in the in the original USFL. Oh my goodness. Like those running back rooms were stacked. For NFL, you should have left KC away team, right KC home team, they won't be specialty helmets. That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. The um the problem is that it depends on the team's playing. That's the problem. Like ideally, I want to fill the entire case with just helmets of the teams playing in the games. The problem is that there are some teams that have way more of than others. Just because of availability. Like Panthers, not a lot. Buccaneers, not a lot. Packers, Eagles, crap ton. Crap ton of helmets. Kickoff fielded. 25, 30. 35 got some room to the 40. 45 and down he goes to the 47 yard line. Return on the play by Trey Williams. So Memphis ball at the 47. Favorite fit I made was the red zone, but not counting red zone. Um, favorite fit I've made was... I love the talent show video. The talent show video, I love making that one. I also felt really proud of the, the, the DG video, but the talent show vid, I love doing that one. McCar projection for JJ McCarthy, late first, early second. He's going to go top five. He's going to go top five. I I'd be shocked if he doesn't go before six. First and ten. Pass over the middle. Tipped. Incomplete. Wait, are they saying, did Houston pick that? Houston thinks they picked it off. The ref's saying incomplete pass. Camera angle. Camera got fooled there. Yeah, the reason that the USFL originally competed with the NFL was because player relations in the NFL were not that good. They were not that good. I mean, we just had the strike in 1982. They weren't getting paid a lot of money, and USFL was like, "We're gonna, we're gonna pay you a ton of money." All right, second and ten. Yeah, that ball clearly hit the ground. Yeah, Bardo, it's very good offensive lineman. Three wide, one on the near side, two on the far side. Kokus. Checks off on the flat to Victor. Victor at the 50, Victor into plus territory at the 48-yard line. So third and five. If the UFL refs go to the NFL, they were going to have a referee football game. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, there's just no transparency with the referees in the NFL, which I like about the UFL. I like the transparency. Uh, our March Madness commercial is similar to Super Bowl in that... They make their debut during the tournament. Yeah, pretty similar. You get them on Thursday, and then they don't stop. Yeah, University of Houston, same undergoing renovations. So that's why. The true best JJ9 bids are the Urban Meyer Dumb Decisions and the Dumb Decisions on the Jags Ravens. I mean, there's a common theme in that game. I, I hate those videos. Third and five slant route caught at the first down line, 43-yard line, needed five, got five. First down on the play. You figure if the showboats can get one first down there in field goal range, they can make it a two-score game again. That's really all you need to do here. All you need to do. And again, you see the, the ticker on the bottom line. You can see the stats from the games that took place yesterday, the scores that took place yesterday. I like doing those. I like this bottom line thing. If there's anything you want me to add to the bottom line, let me know. Like, we got members. We got a line for members. We got a line for my socials. We got a line for the stats. We got a line for um, prize picks. If there's anything you want me to add, let me know. First down. I think there was a botched play. Someone missed their block. I think Victor missed his block, but Cook is able to escape. Fires on the run. Incomplete pass. Looking for David Davis in the end zone. That was a botched play. That was a botched play. I think Victor went the wrong way on the block. Is it just me or if Super Bowl commercials have been awful? No, it's not just you. I think part of the problem now with the commercials is there's no creativity. The creativity is gone. Used to it used to be the commercials were creative, and now it's it's the um it's the opposite. It's here's the celebrity buy our product, and they don't even use the celebrity the right way. Like you can use celebrities in, in in a clever, creative way, and make it that like that like that's good. But people just 
commercial companies just use these celebrities just to have them, and it doesn't make any sense. Slant route caught at the lines again. Needed 10, got 10. First down. They're in field goal range. Jonathan Adams. Like, um... Worst could we ever play in the outfield. Probably concerns to be Kim McQuilkin. Kim McQuilkin is probably concerned the worst. What terrible QB would be Tom Brady in the UFL? Uh, Justin Fields would be incredible. But like, like State Farm was good with the celebrity. Like, we have Arnold Schwarzenegger in the commercial because it makes sense. We're, we're, we're using he can't save the word neighbor. It's like up and at him from The Simpsons. First down, Cook is keeping himself. Play action, fires. Deep shot, wobbly throw. Bobbled and incomplete. Intended target on the play was Lee Morris. Been a quiet game for him. Second and ten. Or like the Dunkin' Donuts commercial with, with the Boston celebrities. Like, that makes sense. But there were so many commercials where it's just, here's this celebrity. We have a famous person. Let's buy the product. They substitute creativeness for person. And in five years, a lot of these celebrities are not going to be well-known. So it just doesn't hold up. I've never been in the Jags pool now. I've never been in the pool. I would have wanted to watch a game in the pool. Like, that sounds terrible. Second and ten. Cookus. Deep shot. Has been working all day today. Incomplete pass. Daywood Davis. Again, the intended target. That fly route has not been working. They've tried that quite a few times today. They drew one pass interference. But other than that, the... They drew two pass interferences, actually. But other than that, the... It has not been good. It really has not been good. The deep ball percentage completions is... I don't think it's played a single deep pass. What if Arnold ran for president? I mean, he is technically qualified. <laughs> technically, he is qualified. Third and ten. Cookus. Looking. Throwing incomplete off the back foot. Intended target on that play was Vinny Papale, who had the touchdown earlier. Fourth and ten, and you figure now you kick the field goal. I wasn't a fan of the Edward Jennifer Aston did not know who David Schwimmer was. And yeah, that was fine. I've seen worse. Giants answer at QB. Not on the roster right now. Not on the roster right now. Which Russell Wilson saying was the most cringe? Unlimited. Definitely unlimited in the um in the in his house. 51 yard try. Matt Coughlin, he is one for two today. That one he drills. 51 yards, it's good. It's a two-score game. 18-6. The score. Memphis looking to go on the road. Be the second road team to win this week alongside Birmingham. You hate Jennifer Aston to the ground? That seems like a weird person to hate to the ground. Right, so Houston's got some work to do. It might be, considering the clock rules, it might be four down territory from this point on. Yep, use those emojis. Show those showboat, show that showboat love if you are a showboats fan. Weirdest score I've seen? Um, what was that? The Penn State game where a team scored four points? Thoughts on Michael Jackson, football player. He was a very solid receiver. He was a very solid receiver back in the 90s. Very, very solid. Fun player to watch. Fun player to watch. If you mean the cornerback, um, not very good. <laughs> the cornerback is not good, but if you're talking like the 90s receiver, yeah, he was really good. I've never been to the hollow, no. The Guardians uniform was, eh, I mean, for New York it worked. For Orlando it didn't work. The color scheme doesn't work for Orlando like it does for New York. And again, be sure to use my promo code at PrizePix, 100% to 100 bucks. You can bet on the UFL. You can bet on the UFL. Helps the channel a lot. I get a pretty big cut every time someone uses my promo code. So. Helps out a lot if you do want to bet on the UFL. PrizePix has some pretty good, pretty good bets. Let's see. I, I, I know they're, they're taking on the bottom line, but they do have some good ones. Had some pretty good ones last week, too. Or yesterday, too. They have Rome going to the Jets at 10. I'm not sure he falls to 10. 
be a good pick for the Jets, obviously. A 1-2-3 receiving unit of Rome, Mike Williams, and Garrett Wilson. That'd be incredible, but I'm not sure he falls to, to 10. A lineman for the Bills named Bill Murray. No word if he's a Cubs fan like actual Bill Murray. I didn't think Bill Murray had actual eligibility to be an NFL player. I mean, after he helped the help the, the, the Toon Squad when <laughs> that came back in the 90s. Yeah, Jackson will be a very good place for a UFL team. A very good place. I'd root for them. Because they don't have any other pro sports. They don't have any pro sports in Jacksonville during the spring. They have minor league baseball. They've got... Um, they've got... Minor league hockey. They've got arena football. What time is the game expect to be over? I would probably say... Uh, 6 o'clock Eastern. Most random celebrity endorsement I've seen... Oh, man. The... Um, the Star Trek voiceover guy doing the Auto by Tell commercial was bizarre. It's like, wait, what? The other one that, that makes no sense, Larry David endorsing crypto. We're going to look back at that like, wait, Larry David endorsed crypto. Like, that that doesn't make any sense. Some people that endorse crypto. Larry David. All right. Kickoff will bounce and go out of bounds. So penalty... For an illegal kickoff. So Houston's going to have some pretty good field position as a result. That's the first time this season we've seen a kickoff out of bounds. And you can see on ESPN the score or the, the schedule tomorrow or Saturday. Brahma's Showboats, we got that game. And Renegades Battlehawks, we will not have that game. The FedEx Moon Office commercial, I don't remember that one. Crypto, your enthusiasm. <laughs> Al Pacino, Duncacino. <laughs> but that was for a movie. That was that was for a movie. That was like the only good part of Jack and Jill. The only good part. That's why people ask me, is that the worst movie of all time? I'd say no. It's bad. It's awful. But it is not the worst movie of all time because of that one scene. It at least has one redeeming quality. And that's the Duncacino ad at the end. First down. Guarantano behind the line of scrimmage. Caught. Has some blocking to the 45. First down the 40. Down he goes to the 34-yard line. It's a 16-yard game by Justin Hall. His first touch of the game. It's like the one good thing about that movie. Gotta go. Thanks for having me. All good, NK Hurts. Thank you so much for tuning in. Encrypt your enthusiasm. <laughs> Would endorsements by Doodle Bob help pencil sales? Yes. 100%. But then again, do pencils seem really to be advertised? First down over the middle ball is caught. First down at the 23-yard line by the tight end. Braden Bowman, the former South Alabama man. Like, there are certain things like... Like Q-tips. Like, do Q-tips need advertising? Like, when you say an ad for Q-tips, like, I, I feel like people just know what Q-tips are. There's one brand of Q-tips... Do people need advertisements for Q-tips? It's sort of cotton swaps, but, they're, but people call them Q-tips. It's, it's such a generic name at this point. Like, I don't think they have protection on their on their mark. First and 10. Guarantano pressure. Fires in the flat. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. Nice juke move down to the 15-yard line. Gain of eight. Best drive of the game so far. Kirk Merritt. Finally get him involved. After he dropped that, or fell down on that screen pass earlier. Second and two. Like pencils, like you don't need pencil or like Sharpies. Like, do Sharpies need advertising? If you've seen advertising for Sharpies, do they need advertising? Even to some extent, toilet paper. You just grab the first, you just grab what's available. Second and two of the 15. Empty backfield, five wide. Guarantano steps up, looking to avoid the sack. He cannot, ball comes out. Who's got it? Falls on it! Second turnover today! And the showboats get a stop in the red zone, recovered on the play by Dylan Fumato. Memphis ball, that might be it, barring anything crazy. The showboats coach Kurt Stroud, um, 
No, DiFilippo's the, the coach of the, the showboats. The showboats coach is, is DiFilippo. Curtis Johnson's the Roughnecks coach. You got it. Um, it's the other way around. Second time today that Houston has turned the ball over. It's a big one. It's a big one. First down for Memphis at the 24-yard line. 22. That ball comes out. Who's got this one? Are we going to have bad to back turnovers? Memphis says they have it. They're pointing like they have it. You see Adams pointing in that direction. But no, it's Houston football. Houston ball. Whoa. Let's see. Back to back turnovers potentially. Blandino's taking a look. This might be no harm done. Overtime today? Yes. We will have overtime. Yes. Oh my goodness. It's under review for a fumble. Ruben Foster comes up with it. Another turnover that he's come up with. Had the interception earlier in the half. Memphis offense, 15 points in the first. Nothing doing this one. Yeah, that's clearly a fumble. There's nothing to review. The exchange was bad. The exchange with Victor was bad. Memphis's offense, look, there are some questions about Houston, uh, Memphis's offense. Um, because, yes, they did score 18, but they did score a touchdown off a of scoop and score. So, offense really has not done a whole lot for Memphis. 12 men on the field. It goes from bad to worse. It's going to be first and five now. First and five for Houston at the 17. This one is not over, folks. If I were NFL commissioner, what would I do for the league? Um, a lot. I would do a lot of stuff. I would revise the personal conduct policy to make it way more strict. Way more strict. Get rid of the draft? No, God, no. That's the last thing I do. Get rid of the draft is how you destroy the NFL. You want to destroy parity? You want to destroy fan interest in the league? That's how you do it. Destroy the draft. First and five. Play action. Or not play action. Caught by Vic caught by the running back down to the two yard. Ooh, I was all off on that one. Ooh, man, that was bad. That was bad. It's Kirk Merrick on the grab. It's gonna say look through his reads. Hits the running back. There we go. What I could honestly see them doing, what what I could see them doing, you know how what, what the um, I could see them in the next um, in the next five years, I could see them doing this. And I'll, I'll I'll say what it is after this possession, because you guys are gonna hate it. I'm not saying it's good for the fans, but I could absolutely see them doing this. First single, the handoff goes to the running back, goes to Merritt, Merritt down to the one. Thoughts on Kuiper? He is. The most... He changed the game. Kuiper changed the game. Without him, the draft is not what it is. Yeah, the very first time I picked Jay Burwanger never played in the NFL because he got more money elsewhere. Florida is saying that college players should choose where they want to play, not that they're forced to play. No, that's... That, well, that's terrible. QB sneak? Is he in? Guarantano is in. Touchdown. Sure, the Roughnecks. One score game... You figure, here you go for one. Figure, here you go for one. Yeah, so I'll change a lot. You figure, you, you go for one here. It wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense to do anything else. Why, why would you, why would you go for two? Wait, what, why, why would you go for two? Oh, they're going for three. Oh, okay. They're going for three. Okay, I can live with that. Oh, they're going for two. Okay, I can live with going for three. Personally, I go for one here. I go for one. This is a high-risk play. It's not been a three-point attempt successfully converted so far this year. He sends six. Guarantano fires. Corner shot. Intercept in the end zone. Yeah, I would have gone for... I personally would have gone for one. If the extra point was automatic, you go for three. But I personally would go for one. All right, let me do the, the kickoff. Um, let me do that. Switch that around. 18-12. Why would you go for one? Because then if you score a touchdown, you automatically have the lead. Because it, it's not automatic that you score. 
not automatically you get the... Yeah, plus three point play is tough. If extra point was automatic, if it was like the old USFL rules where you kick the extra point, then yeah, you go for three. No, you don't go. You don't do the fourth and twelve this early. No, there's no way you do the fourth and twelve this early. Um, so personal um, conduct policy, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that after I do the the, um, the thing that I think is going to happen in the NFL. I think there's going to be a time five years from now. You see the Premier League do it. The Premier League has done it, where they announce the schedule of games. All right, they announce the schedule. But from weeks 14 through 18, all you know with the schedule is who you play. They don't tell you the times. They don't tell you the dates. They announce those at a later date. They announce those on like, you no, know, they announce them at like week nine. I could see them doing that. I think the NFL will probably have talked about that at some point. I could see the NFL saying, okay, Here's the schedule. Here's what happens the final five weeks of the season, but we're not going to tell you what Sunday football is, what Monday night football is, what Thursday night football is, what times everyone's playing. We're going to be flexible on that, and we're not going to reveal anything until... Um, we're going to reveal anything. That is a squib kick. Bounces at the 40, field at the 36. A weird kickoff there. I'm not sure what the plan was necessarily why you would squib it there. That's at the 47-yard line. Yeah, that script kick didn't seem to make a whole lot of sense, but that was clearly by design. Memphis Wealth, 47, first and 10. But I could see them doing that. You see the Premier League do that, too. You see the Premier League do that. You know, this game is coming interesting. One score game. One score game. If the UFL is stable for the next few years, do I see college players electing to play a year or two in the UFL and electing not to go to the draft? No, I, I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening. The money's better in the NFL, too. The, the money's better. First down at the 47. Handoff. Gain of two yards on the play goes to Victor. When the league moved, go first back? Back in the 70s. Back in the 70s. I think 1974, I want to say. Because it was in place for Super Bowl 7. I think it was in place for Super Bowl 8 as well. I think 1974 was the first year. So the, um, and yeah, plagiarism is bad, folks. Plagiarism is bad. There's no other way to say it. Plagiarism is bad. Um, the, the, um, the thing I would change with the, with the personal conduct policy. I'll say it for this way. Second and nine goes to David Davis. It's one of those forward passes that counts as a pass. Since eighth catch of the game brings up third and three at the 45. I'm not married. I don't have a girlfriend. No, I do not. I do not. Um, the thing I would change... I, I talked about it on a JJ9 News video. I would change it where players cannot say certain things. Who missed the 10-year field goal? It was the Patriots-Falcons game. Patriots-Falcons game. Back in 71, I want to say. I think it was 71. It was a 9-year field goal, I think. Third and four. Kokos. First two reads aren't there. Going to fire behind the line. Has to break it over the tackle. He does. Can he get the first down? He does. Needed four. Got five. All effort there by number eight, Titus Swen. His first grab of the day. And it's a first down at the 40. 4.02 left. Houston has all three timeouts. And Memphis, because of the clock rules, they can take the stance to the two-minute warning, even by throwing the ball. Um, But I would make it so that they can't say certain stuff that makes that makes them look uneducated. Yeah, we didn't really need a true line measurement for that. He got it. He got it. So what I mean by that, and I talked about it on JJ9 News. Head off up the middle, no gain on the play. Memphis' run game has not done anything so far today. That run by Titus Sweat just made the grab. Nothing doing. So like I, I would make it so that all players cannot say things that compromise the education of the country. So you cannot say as an NFL player, you what you do is you, you get a board of, of educators from elementary school and they, they have to agree on a, as there's a timeout on the, on the field, Roughnecks will burn their first timeout. They have two left. I'm not going live for CFL, no. Because um, also, like, I have to abandon CFL later in the season because of the NFL. 
Um, so what what that would mean is that you get like a, a group of educators together and they come up with what is the curriculum for education in each of the 50 states and unanimous stuff, stuff that appears on all 50 states. A player cannot dispute that. And if they do, they get fined publicly. So you cannot say as a player, I don't believe in outer space. Dinosaurs aren't real. Like the earth is flat. You can't say stuff like that. Second and 10, Cookus runs. Looking for the first down. He's going to go down to the 36 yard line, brought down by the legs by Olive Segapolu. You figure Houston will burn their third time out here. Oh, yeah, that song from the 90s. Yeah, Money Talks, Money Talks, Dirty Cash. Yeah. What was the group name? The Adventures of. It's third and six for the showboats. And welcome back to the stream, Matthew. Welcome back. Missed you yesterday. Um, third and six, well, the 36 yard line. Would I find McDermott? No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't find McDermott. He didn't deny that it happened. He just made a really dumb comparison, which I thought was funny. I thought like you you look at like the, and it, not like like funny, but like I'll, I'll say it again. Third and four, four wide two on the other side, two on the far side. Cook is looking slant route, caught or incomplete rather, batted down short of the line. Fourth and four, clock will run. Will Houston burn a timeout? Let's see. Yeah, Ventures CV, that's that's the group. Yep, that's the that's the group. Fourth and four, you figure they're gonna line up for the field goal here. It'll be 52 yard try for Matt Coughlin. It will not take a timeout. I don't know Johnny Cash, it's a real name. Um No, because what what McDermott did, I'll, I'll talk about after this. You yeah, room the top by Adam Matt. Yeah, great song. Great song. Fourth and four, the kick, 55 yards, it is off the upright and no good! The second missed kick by Memphis Saber, there's a flag on the play! There's a flag on the play. If Houston jumped... It's offside. It's offside on the Roughnecks. First time I'm checking this weekend, how's it going, Jacob? Welcome to the stream. And it was, let's see, yep, that's, he jumped, he jumped. He jumped. Three strikes throughout, I like that. They do have a super challenge. But I, th I, I, th I don't think there's anything to look at there. They're gonna challenge this, but I, I don't think there's a whole lot to look at here. Oh, but I'll... He looked like he, he went off. No, it's what, what McDermott did. And there was nothing happening, so we'll talk about the challenge. Um, what McDermott did was he basically just made a comparison. That's fine. Also, what happened with... Um, you're, wait, you're, you're close to winning 50k on DraftKings? What do you mean by 3.6 points away? From who? The challenge of whether he was offset. Let's see. It was at the 37. The helmet's past the 37. Yeah, he's offside. There's that's a yeah, there's there's nothing. There's nothing there. Houston's gonna lose a timeout. Houston's gonna lose a timeout. Oops. Wrong thing. Also, like you listen to like like the athletic article on McDermott. There was also a thing where like he talked about like a courageous guy who like tried to like who like was at Niagara Falls and, like, fell. And, like, you think the story's going somewhere, and then, no, he just died. Like, McDermott was just bad at giving stories. That's all it is. It, it was more like Michael Scott. It wasn't more like Michael Scott. Now, if, if he denied that it happened, like, if he denied that it, like, the terrorist attacks happened, yes, he'd be fine. Um, Rogers, would, would he be punished for disliking vaccines? No, no. It is an elementary school curriculum. It is an elementary school curriculum. It is not politically based. It is not, because it's your choice whether they got a vaccine or not. Uh, I can agree with it, I can disagree with it, but it's your choice at the end of the day. It's your choice. Um, and they don't teach the science of vaccines in elementary school. They don't teach that. I'm talking elementary school stuff. I'm talking literally, like, everything... You know, back in 23... Yeah, Prince was very strict with his music library. It's, it's been lax now that he's died. Um, but yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking... I'm not talking political thing. I'm not talking like vaccines. I'm not talking anything like that. I'm talking like 
elementary school, like, ex- denying the, ex- the existence of dinosaurs. Every, every state in the country teaches dinosaurs as part of their curriculum at some point. Every elementary school teaches that the Earth is round and that outer space exists. I'm talking that. If you publicly deny that, because kids look up to these players as role models. Whether it's right or wrong, they look up to players as role models. And you have a your like your star athlete saying, Oh, like, oh, the earth is flat. Well, my role model says it, so it must be true. Like, no. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about anything politically based. I know you, you get down a, that's why, like, I'm not going down the rabbit hole of censor anything. It's just like you have to get a group of educators from all 50 states, and if if every state teaches it. Then you're then it's banned. Every state teaches it. It's banned. It's part of the curriculum for every state. So that's what I mean. First and ten, handoff, nothing doing bottled up at the line. Takes a two minute warning. 34 yard line. Loss of two. Second and twelve. Game is not over. No. Um 18 12. Two minutes left. What's your bet they have to win? What's your bet to win 50k? What's what's your bet? The game's on ESPN, for those wondering. The game is on ESPN. And again, we're doing all the UFL games this season, or just about most of them, at least. We're doing three games next week. Yeah, what's the bet they have to win? Because 3.6 points, I don't know what that means. Um, is it like a player prop? Like betting on players? Yeah, basically the whole Texas Tech player. Yes, that. Exactly. That's where it comes from. Yes. The Texas Tech, I don't believe in outer space. So, like, like evolution. Like, yeah, evolution's a thing. But I'm not sure every state teaches evolution. If even one state doesn't teach evolution... It's not part of the thing. You know, it's not part of the thing. It's if every... Oh, Fantasy DK. It's, um... 18, 12, cue the overture. I love that. I love that. You know, it has to be... Basically... Yeah, basically, it has to be part of the curriculum of every single state. That's what it is. Yeah, what player are you are you picking on? 3.6. That's a lot of points again in the next two minutes. Like, that's why. Like, even, like, Evolution. Like, that's... that's like... Like, if every, if there's even one state that doesn't teach evolution. Is J.J. Nine saying with the Rockies? I mean, can't hurt him at, can't hurt him at this point. How are they doing right now? Okay, 5-1 mid-6. Spots pitching lights out. Oh, Rockies have three hours? Fantastic. The Rockies are the worst fielding team I've seen this year. The Rockies, I mean, granted, they're the only fielding team I've seen this year, but they are terrible at fielding the ball. Holy cow. They should have had, like, five errors on Friday night. Yeah, like Kyrie Irving saying, like, the earth is flat. Yeah, exactly. That. Like that. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. I'm not talking about like your political views. I'm not talking about um, like things that can be debated. I'm talking things that cannot be debated. Like you cannot debate whether the earth is flat or not. Like that's not up for debate. Like that's what I mean. It'd be very, very strict. It would be a very, very tight. Like we're not going down a 1984 rabbit hole where we're just censoring people for not agreeing to like group thing. It's, it's, we are we are talking about, like, the denial of certain events. Like, if you were to deny certain events happened, um, if you were to deny the existence of the Earth being flat, the existence of outer space, like that, if you publicly say that, yes, that's what I would do. That's what I would do. <laughs> we should not be rewarding stupidity. That's what I, that's what I mean. Oh, I forgot to close the poll. Yeah. That's what I would do. Which NFL head coach pass or it looks like he has no idea what primary colors are? <laughs> Campbell. Definitely Dan Campbell. Definitely Dan Campbell. <laughs> Give me the years the A's will win the World Series. Um, I don't know when the heat death of the universe will be. So, whenever that is, that. All right. Roughnecks have one timeout left. NFL timing rules in effect at this point. So you figure they're just going to run the ball two times to kill some clock. Second and 13. Ball to 34. Handoff. Gain of maybe one. Maybe one. I don't know why Houston's not taking their timeout now. But they're not. I guess they're going to save it for the next play, but you usually take it... Wait, now they're calling... Wait. Wait, are now they're calling the timeout? Wait. Oh, no, we have an injury. We have an injured roughneck, so that will be a timeout. So they waste about 14 seconds, and then they have to take a timeout because of the injury. So 
That's that's big. That's big. Make sure you're taking the time out right away. Price went up by one dollar. Had the minimum wage increase in California. I mean, I'm not surprised by that. I'm not surprised on slice, but and that's Ruben Foster who went down. Big loss. Depending on how serious this injury is, he was the best player on the field today so far. Recovered a fumble. Got the pick. Start of the, of the third quarter. Does Eminem eat M Ms? I mean, who doesn't eat M Ms? M Ms are great. All right. So third and twelve, we got one forty left in this one. Oh, Potters have twelve two. That's that's going to be position player time in the eighth inning. Yeah, sure. The Texas Tech player is saying space is real. My dad was a science teacher, and he thinks he shouldn't get a degree from Texas Tech. Yeah, especially like Texas Tech. They've sent like people to the moon. Texas Tech has people that work at NASA. Like that's crazy. That's crazy. Like, I don't know how you can go through life not thinking space is real. Like just look up at the sky. Doesn't think the moon is real. Look up at the sky. What do you think that is at night every every night? Third and twelve. Ball at the thirty-nine yard line. The handoff. It goes to Titus Swen. Swen flag on the play. So this one's going to come back. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a first down or not because there was a flag on the play for holding, it's going to look like. And that will take him out of field goal range. That's a big, big penalty potentially. Yeah, take him out of field goal range. Third and 22. Back him up to the 43-yard line. How much would insurance companies pay for if the Kool-Aid man comes crashing through your wall? Um, I mean, like, in the Family Guy universe with the Kool-Aid man with the courthouse, um, at that point, that's on the courthouse. It's the same wall every time. He's crashed through, like, seven times. You gotta, like, have, like, better walls. Third and 23, ball to 43. A first down should win it for them. It will win it for them, but they need 23 yards to do it. Now, you probably call a screen pass here. I know passes could stop the clock if it falls incomplete, but if you call a screen pass... You just gotta, you gotta get into field goal range. You gotta make it a nine-point game. You gotta make it so that the worst use can do is tie it. Running has not done anything for Memphis today. They're running and it's been poor. Surprisingly poor. With Sweat and Victor, nothing's happening. I would just call a screen pass here. Running back screen, see if they can get five yards to try a field goal. Because I don't think you're getting five on a run. I don't think you're getting five on a run. Third down, they are gonna run it. And yeah, that's that's what I was worried about. That's what I was worried. Just call a screen pass, high percentage play that would keep the clock running, maybe get some yards, but nope. Now you can't try a field goal. Unless you want to try from 59 yards. It's fourth and 21 at the 41-yard line. I don't think you can you can't try it. It's too risky. I just pit them deep. They've, you've realized when Texas Tech this is the guy was an idiot, they don't know how he graduate eighth grade to even get to college. That is true. Yeah, that is true. I don't know how. Because look, if you now you have to punt the ball. You can't try a field goal here. Try a field goal for 59 yards. I mean, he's not Jake Bates. Matt Coughlin's not Jake Bates. I mean, he missed earlier in the game. He missed again, but they got bailed up by the offside penalty. Um, yeah, they're going to call a timeout with 46. So they just let it run. Okay, they're going to use a timeout. They have one left. Like, you can't try the... You can't try a field goal here. If you do, if you miss, Houston's got the ball in midfield... Look, I, here's what I'd say. Houston's offense has not moved the ball down the field all game. They have not moved the ball down the field all game. The one touchdown came on a fumble in the red zone. At this point, I tell Guarantano and this Houston offense, which has done nothing today, at three first downs in the first half, punt this ball, as long as it's on a touchback, like, okay, Houston, go down the field 85 yards, 90 yards, with no timeouts. That's what I'd be doing. If I'm Memphis, I don't try a field goal here. You can't. And that's why I would have tried the screen pass earlier. So you could try a field goal and make it manageable and make it like a 52-yard kick potentially. And then Coughlin can try the kick and then he's... He can make the kick and then it's, it's a nine-point game and Houston can tie the game. But... Yes, if a player denied that, yes. That's what I mean. Yes, a player denying that would be a perfect example of that. That would be a perfect example of that. At what point do I tell the winner Olive Garden to stop the cheese? I mean, just ask the Geico commercial. Once they run out of cheese. Fourth and 20, gonna punt this one away. White gets it off. It's a fair catch at the 13. Muffed it! He muffed the punt! Who's got it? Who's got it? Fight for the football! Memphis says they have it! And they do! Memphis is gonna 
to win this game. Flag afterwards for a fight, but it's Memphis football. The third turnover of the game for the Roughnecks. And now it's over. And now it's over. The Memphis Showboats come to Houston. We're going to take a look. Again, Blandino on it. There's a flag after the play for some extracurricular activity. Yeah, the, the, flag, came after, the flag came after the recovery. The flag's going to be for some extracurricular activity. It's just a matter of, it's a matter of fighting. The, the flag is going to be on... Um, the flag is not on, on the muff. Flag is not. Why does a JJ Nickel actual football game is your beast? Thank you so much, girl. Thank you so much. I like doing this. I like doing this. It's not um like I can just interact with the fans and that. Yeah, Memphis ball, personal fell, unnecessary roughness. On the kicking team. Offsetting penalty. Yeah, offsetting penalties after the play for, for a fight. And that's gonna do it, folks. The final score! The Houston Roughnecks go down. The Memphis Showboats with the win. 18-12, the final. Jason, I should be a Fox announcer in place of Vilma. I mean, to be fair, anyone could do a better job than Vilma. Anyone could do a better job. Thoughts on the street rice situation? Yeah, we have to figure out if it was him driving. But if it was him, yeah, he should be, he should be, like, he should be kicked out. I mean, that, that was horrible. He was clearly going 150, at least. He was clearly going 150. Cook is going to take a knee, and the Memphis Showboats win this one. By a score, another win for the USFL over the XFL. Again, asterisk next to that one, just because it's really the a USFL roster. But Memphis Showboats get the win. They go to 1-0. So in the USFL division, Memphis and Birmingham 1-0. Alongside Michigan, Arling, or Houston 0-1. Sole possession. A first place after this week in the XFL division, San Antonio. Who thought that coming? Who thought that one coming? Put the control down, shake my hand. There you go. There you go. And I think the under won in all four. And again, prize picks, promo code 100%, prize match up to 100 bucks. All right. Yeah, all pure USFL teams won. Yes. Again, a bit of an asterisk X to this one, but yeah. All right. With that being said, let me just turn on the, um, let me switch the game. Put on the D-backs game. All right, with that being said, for those who have never been to a JG9 live stream before, um, since so 5-1 D-backs, which is awesome, 80 people in the stream, we're not done yet. We are not done yet. For those who have been to a JG9 live stream before, you know exactly what's coming. You know exactly what's coming. Because we have this thing on JG9. Let me get the gradient going. We have this thing. Uh, would he be punished under that? Um, he'd be punished for the Earth's flat. I don't know if he'd be punished for that. Again, we're not talking about, we're not talking about, like, belief system. Even if it's, like, a horrible belief. We're talking, like, like, we're not talking opinions. We're talking stuff that, like, cannot be disputed. Now, some of the other stuff he said about the Jews, yes. Yes, I think, like, in general, yes. I mean, he, he was basically fined by the NBA, though. That's already covered under the personal account policy. That's already covered. Yep, we got overtime. Let me get the um, the overtime thing. Let me get this, the image. I have to figure out what the image is. Overtime, here we go. So, for those who don't know what overtime is, here's what overtime is. Yeah, I can't show you if a lot... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not allowed to show the games. So, for those who don't know what overtime is, apologies to the XFL 2001 cases to which I'm covering up the helmets. I am going to stay on. And we're going to stay on for as long as possible. This is called overtime. And how overtime works is that I'm going to put five minutes on the clock. Let me change the color of the timer to black so you can see it. I'm going to put five minutes on the clock. You can see on the thing, each donation increases the time that we are on stream. Once the clock hits zero, that is it. I sign off. But every donation increases the time. There is no set time limit. I could be on forever, essentially. Let me get my headphones in. Because um, basically anything and everything goes. Anything and everything goes in OT. Um, a lot can happen. You could send me music requests. Send me show requests. You could send me anything. 
Yeah, Houston had so many chances. A lot of sloppiness. A lot of sloppiness. Not so on Carlos Johnson as head coach. I mean, there were some really dumb things he did. That that management in the um the, that management in the fourth was terrible. That management in the fourth was absolutely terrible. I don't know to say that management in the fourth was absolutely terrible. <laughs> In the, in the first quarter with the, the delay of game and then that. Connor Akers getting things started with a fiber. Thank you so much. Let me get your name in there and then we'll start we'll start this clock. La Bra Bron Land by featuring Dre. Oh, God. Oh, God. And Amphibia with the two are listening to DJ by Z Trip. All right, we'll do that. Let me let me get the um, let me get these requests in. La Bra Bra Land and DJ by Z Trip. All right, so let me increase the timer and then we'll start the clock. Um, increase by six minutes. So we're going to go up to... There we go. All right. So I'm going to get your names in there, and then we'll be good to go. Um, let me see. Get the names in there. Name of the leading donor. Name of the most recent donor. Here we go. So let me do that, and then we'll be good to go. Again, anything goes in overtime. We're going to be on for a long, long time. All right. Let's see. Do you feel like players being fined for uniform violations during the game that are a result of play for play should be removed? Yes. Yes. They should be removed. 100%. Isaac Hobbs with a tenor. Watch Blaine Gabbert 2011 preseason highlights. Those exist? Those exist? He, he has highlights? From the preseason? Really? Alright. Someone actually made a video. Is it like the Quan Treble highlights? It was like 20 seconds. Like one play? Free pizza just got here, too. That's the way to do it. Thank you for the time, man. Really appreciate it. I remember that preseason, too. I was like, okay, you know what? Gabbert didn't look good, but at the very least, he's going to be the third-string quarterback. Like, he can develop. Like, that's why we have Garrard. That's why we have McCown. And then, all of a sudden, oh, no, you're, you're starting. Am I going to do a demonstrations video? Maybe on the UFL. Maybe. I mean, that, that first quarter management was bizarre at the end. All right, so we're doing... Um, let me switch my account. We'll be good to go. We're doing um, LeBron Bron Land first. Featuring, oh jeez. From House of Highlights, oh god. All right. A production quality is really good on this. Wait, the production quality of this is incredible. What on earth? I love Lava Land too. I love this song. UFL can to kill all interest in the Roughnecks so they can move the team out of Houston, making them use a super mid gamblers roster in the week coaching. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, that that is a good point. I mean, I don't think they're conspiring. I think we're just XFL, UF, USFL. You gotta have two teams in each, but. <laughs> There's Drake. Banjo with the tour. Thank you so much. Listen to I Dream of Jesus by the, um, the Dead Milkman. All right, we will do that. get you in there. Other than pineapple, not starting that debate yet, what toppings have you seen on pizza that just don't belong? Anchovies. Anchovies. Oh, there's another song. Oh, it's multiple songs. Oh, it's multiple songs. There's City of Stars now? Oh, boy. Amphibia, <laughs> again with the zero. Thank you so much. Angry Grandpa's to be blow. There we go. Um, let me put you in there again. Thank you so much. This is good. This is like legitimately good. What the heck? So remember you doing a video on JG8 about Idaho playing a home game at Pullman when Washington State was the away team. Could them hosting Spokane Arena be the same thing? Um, I guess, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Idaho at Spokane would definitely be same thing.
Again, any questions, I'll answer them. We got 43 people in the stream. It's still awesome. Again, the Steam is, is over. Final score, 18-12. Got videos coming out tomorrow of a UFL recap on JJ9 News for week one. I'll do that. That'll be fun. We're going to do a lot of UFL content on JJ9 News, too. So be on the lookout for that. Be on the lookout for that, vid. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> that was really good. All right, DJ by... Um, I think it auto-corrected, so let me... Z-Trip, there we go. In my notes app, auto-corrected. ZJ by Z-Trip. Wait, listen to... Wait. What am I look... Wait. The DJ... Wait, the DJ by Z-Trip. Okay, the DJ. I don't... I see a lot of Z-Trip. I don't see... What's the... Is, what's the channel name? For that one. What's the challenge by that one? All right. While we wait on that, because I'm seeing DJ Z Trip, but there's like a bunch of different videos. So I just want to make sure I got the right one. While we're doing that, okay, Blaine Gabbard preseason highlights. How's it going, Sassy? Welcome to the stream. We got overtime. We got overtime. All right, Blaine Gabbard preseason highlights, 2011. All right. Oh, just his plays from that game. Okay. I remember watching this game, too. This is going to be a trip down memory lane in the worst ways. It's going to be a, a trip down memory lane in the worst ways. Arizona equivalent to Bucky's? Circle K, maybe? I don't know. All right. Here we go. Gabber play action. That's a nice play. There we go. That's the first round pick. I mean, it was wide open. I haven't seen this in ages. I like to point this game on memory. We did nothing this game. I remember that. Yeah, right over the middle. Low throw, but... Yeah, Jason Hill. I mean, that receiving core was so bad. That receiving unit was terrible. Oh, listen to the DJ by Z Trip. Okay, listen to the DJ. Okay. All right, so we'll do that next. Again, any donations? I increase the time, and we do... Whatever you want me to. All right. So good start. It's two for two. Gabber. Back foot. Yeah, that, that's part of, that, that was a big thing in 2011. Anytime there was pressure, he threw off his back foot. Threw off his back foot. Um, There was like... He threw low and he was off balance. Third and two. Again, back foot. Again. Again. These, these mechanics are terrible. I mean, I knew his mechanics were awful. I didn't realize just how bad, like... Now my blinders are off with Gabber. Like, 20 over, like, oh my god, yep, happy feet. And then he gets sat. Like, he he jumped. He saw pre The three times he saw pressure, back foot, back foot, and then he jumps. Like, you think Sam Donald's a ghost in the pocket? Like, Blaine Gabbert saw a ghost avalanche. If I could change the results of any World Series other than 2023, which one would I change? Round be 2013 with 2004 being a close second. I would do 2013. Yeah, definitely 2013. I'm also a Cardinals fan, so definitely 2013. If I can't pick a World Series involving the... If I can't pick a World Series involving the um, Cardinals or the D-backs, yeah, but again, black foot, back foot. That was an out route, too. I don't know how to overshoot that. All right, third and seven. All right. Yeah, that, that was a drop. That's a good throw. Just dropped it. Yeah, that receiving unit was terrible. The, the starters were Mike Thomas, Jason Hill, Jarrett Dillard, yeah, Chaston West at the very end. He was on the pa Packers practice squad. He was the best receiver on the Jaguars by the end of the season. And he was on the Packers practice squad in, like, in October. It was so bad. All right. Gabber. Yeah, it's like, all he knows how to do is throw out routes. It's actually crazy. Favorite fruit from a gas station brand? I don't have a favorite fruit from a gas station brand. I'll buy food at the gas station. What group covered a Simon and Garfunkel song in 1987? Oh. Oh, the Lemonheads covered Miss... I think the Lemonheads covered Miss Robinson, but I don't think that, that was in 87. Um, what song? I don't know. Lean On Me was, was not Simon and Garfunkel. Gabbert yeah, pressured, and he goes down. I'm not sure that one's on him. I'm not sure that one's on him. 
That one's on Eugene Monroe just getting... No, yeah. Yeah, 13 Red Sox were a fluke. I mean, not the season. That that was a great season for them, obviously. But go from last place to first, back to last. Yeah. What am I watching? Blaine Gabbert 2011 preseason highlights. That's where we're at at this point. We have a tour from Connor Akers. Funny American Idol auditions, don't you? Ooh. Yeah. If you're if you're doing an Idol audition with Doja, that's already a good sign. That's already a good sign that you're not going to make it. I love the, that they're talking about how it's important to let Blaine Gabbert sit back and learn. And then he was starting in week three. Why isn't the 2017 World Series considered to be a feel-good story after the Astros won due to Hurricane Harvey? Because they cheated. That's why. Well, the Bengals. Was that Walking... Was Walking Down Your Street a Simon and Garfunkel song? Because I know they, they did that song in 87. Was that Simon and Garfunkel? Yeah, Blaine Gabbert, two pump fakes. Yeah, that's that's um, bad. You yeah, know, it's not a feel-good story because they cheated. That's why. That's why. Yeah, Blaine Gabbert just looks rattled. He looks so rattled. Yeah, every throw is low. Over the middle of the field. Yeah, that's why I got tainted. If it, if it wasn't for the cheating, it would not have been. Because it's like first World Series after that. Oh, Hazy Shade a winner. Yes. I didn't realize it was Simon Garfunkel. And that was dropped by Zach Miller. Remember when there two tight ends named Zach Miller in the NFL? Yeah, I have the USFL helmets. Yeah, it's awesome. I got the USFL. I got the XFL 2001. I've got the XFL helmets from there. Yeah, the Yankees, I thought they were going to win it at one. It's crazy. The one time an Arizona team wins a title and everyone hates them for it. Blaine Gabbert. So he's a free agent right now. He was with the Chiefs last year. He has not been signed. I don't know what's going to happen with him. High throw to Taekwon. I don't really remember him. The Rutgers receiver. Had a big catch in the 2010 game against the Colts. On the 59 year field game. Screen pass. That Brock Bowen, the, the fullback. Yeah, I remember the, the white fullback. The Jaguars had three fullbacks on the roster. Legitimately, the Jaguars at one point in time, because Gene Smith was a genius at constructing a roster, we had three fullbacks on the 53 man roster Montel Owens, Greg Jones, and Brock Bowen. That's the name I haven't heard in a while, Brock Bowen. Oh, man. Who did Santa Sounds Better Disturbed or Simon and Garfunkel? I like the Disturbed version better. I know it sounds crazy. I like the Disturbed version better. They're both great. Burrito from Quick Trip. Yeah, I forgot good things about the burritos there. <laughs> Overshot by like 10 yards to Patrick Shaw. Oh my goodness. He has such happy feet. This is so bad. He, like every single throw he's had, a receiver had to work for it. All right, that's the end of the video. Thank God. Okay, wow. Yeah, that's that's a first round pick for you. That's a first round pick for you. All right, listen to VJ by Z Trip. All right, here we go. Featuring Soup of Jurassic. All right, here we go. Do I miss Garner's my QB? No. No, I don't miss him. He wasn't a good QB. Look, I love the guy for his personality, but I'd rather have Trevor. I don't miss Minshew as my QB. Um, Just because this feels very Beastie Boys-esque right now. I haven't heard the lyrics yet. This feels very Beastie Boys-esque. But no, Garner couldn't throw deep. And he took... Too many sacks. Couldn't start games off well. Mike, Gar Mike, Mike Lennon was better in 2020, honestly. Oh, I recognize this voice. Oh. He's got a Will Smith flow. He's got a Will Smith 90s flow. Like early 90s Will Smith flow. Like summertime kind of flow. I recognize this voice. This is good. This had to be... I've never heard this song before. This has to be... Like, early 90s. You mentioned you also did live off the injury. That is true. Um, what's the most, yeah, that, that would be horrifying if that happened. What's the most recent concert I attended? Um, most recent concert. What was that? Um, Billy Joel. Billy Joel and Stevie Nicks at Chase Field. Um, if it weren't for 9-11, would everyone love the D-backs from the Yankees? Yes, that would have been the greatest thing ever. But because of that, people hated it. Favorite Simon Garfunkel song, My Cecilia. That's a great song. My favorite one has to be Bridge Over Troubled Water. Bridge Over Troubled Water. 
No, I don't know from Madden. Like, I just recognize the voice. I don't remember the song from Madden, but... Nine Inch Nails for Johnny Cash hurt. Uh, Nine Inch Nails. Yeah, the second half of the Duke game starting right now. I need on the call. 27-21 Duke. When did this song come out? This came out in 2004? This sounds like a 90s song. What 86 music video had Chevy Chase? Ooh, I don't know. Was it, um... It wasn't 80s... I know that, that um... Don't Worry Be Happy had Robin Williams. I had one other person. I forget if it was Chevy Chase or not. The Varball insult line, what's the best one? Small baller. Is Florida the only school to win the national championship in football and men's basketball the same academic year? Yes, they are. 06, 07, yep. What statements will absorb by the Varball? Lonzo being better than Steph or he can beat Michael Jordan one-on-one? -on -one? Um, beating Michael Jordan one-on-one. -on -one. At least Lonzo played in the NBA and Steph played in the NBA. At least you could make the argument it could happen. It, it wouldn't, but you could make it an argument. LeVar wouldn't score a point on MJ. Lonzo would at least score on Steph. Amphibia with another two. Thank you so much. Let's... Yeah, that was a good song. Um... It sounds familiar, but again, I don't think it's because of man. It just sounds like a 90s song. Amphibia with the tour, Tear It Up by Andrew WK. All right, we'll do that. First, we got to do I Dream of Jesus. First, we got to do that. Let me get your name and your number in there. There we go. And yeah, if you're just joining us, this is Overtime, where any donation increases the time, and we can do whatever we want on this. Besides Mahomes, if Lawrence wasn't the Jags TV, who would I want as my QB? Josh Allen. Josh Allen, definitely. Definitely Josh Allen. By the Dead Milkman. All right, here we go. Oh. Oh, it's okay. Okay, Jesus lives in a bottle outside 7-Eleven. All right, this is this is this is the true story of Easter. This is this is what Easter's about. Jesus rose from the the 7-Eleven bottle. Gary McTwin was a good sell backup QB for us guys. I don't know where the Jags cut him. Yeah, I mean, he didn't have a place for us on the team. Have both Josh Allen's on the same team. Yeah, that that would also be nice. Is Billy only school to win? Basketball and back-to-back -to -back to opposite teams. Did UConn do it? I think UConn might have done it. I could be wrong on that, but I think UConn men's and women's probably did that at some point. Why would you want to make your linebacker or your quarterback? <laughs> it would force their ownership to pay him. Who in the one season 2020? I think it would have been what? Duke, Dayton, San Diego State, and. I forget who else it would have been. Dayton and San Diego State definitely would have been. I think Duke was going to be. What Cowboys one made me laugh so hard I peed myself? <laughs> um, the. Um, I'll probably say Mike McCarthy in the Eagles game two years ago, where it was. Um, a clear-cut catch by C.D. Lamb that had a first down. The refs marked it short, so they went for it on a fourth down, but he didn't challenge it, and then they threw a deep pass. I was like, what are you What are you doing, Mike? I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> now the mom is like a celebrity on her. Yeah, I think it's Zaga. Yeah, I think Zaga probably, yeah. Well, yeah, let me let me check what the final rankings were. Let me check what, what was the last ranking. It was Kansas, Gonzaga, Dayton, Florida State. Those were the rankings. Duke was the 11. If they won the AC tournament, they probably would have been the one. So my guess is... And San Jose probably would have won their tournament. Kansas, Gonzaga... D my guess would be Kansas, Gonzaga, Dayton, San Diego State. That'd be my guess. 
Five points said the UFO will likely fold in two seasons. Do I believe that? I mean, history says yes. I, I hope it doesn't. But I look, I, I get why people are skeptical. No spring league survived more than three seasons. I get it. I mean, look, I, I want this league to work. I hope it does. I think it will. But I'm not going to criticize anyone that says otherwise. Because it's, um, history's on, on their side. All right, Angry Grandpa's TV blowout. All right, then we got the idol auditions for Don't You. That's a small TV. That's a big box of TV. Even by... This video came out in 2013, so even by that standard, it's like, that's a small TV. That's like a TV you buy in, like, 2001. Connor Akers with a tour. Matt Walsh reacts to driver's license. Oh, God. Oh, God. Let's do that next. The NFL Europe, but that, that had the backing of the NFL. That's different. That that had NFL backing. I don't count that. That had NFL backing. I'm talking like competing leagues. Best version of please, please, please. I'm not sure what that... Not sure what, what please, please, please is. I mean, to be fair, that TV is trash. That TV had to go anyway. That TV was garbage. Was that a photo to us? Yeah, I have no clue. I have no clue. Well, we're coming up with a song together in 1980. I've never heard that song. I have no clue. Besides a division rival, which team would I drop to the middle of the ocean? Um, I mean, at this rate, the Chiefs, just because it means... Oh, the song? Oh, I'd, I'd say... Uh, I think the Smiths are the best version of it. I'd say the Chiefs just so we have a chance in the AFC. <laughs> yeah, he was gonna... He was gonna buy the new TV anyways because that TV was garbage. <laughs> yeah, I think the Smiths are the best version. Alright, Idol Editions with Don't Ya. Alright, here we go. Oh, boy. Did multiple people sing Don't You? She's been a suit in time where and sings Don't You? What? Why? Why is everyone doing Don't You? Who thinks it's a good audition song? That's six hundred people to do Don't You. Seven, eight people. Oh, Tierra. Oh, that's an Arnold Schwarzenegger impression. Thoughts on you thus far? The offense has been lacking. The running game has not been great for the XFL teams. Um, obviously, it's early on. It, stuff's going to change, obviously. This always happens with the spring. It's the first few weeks, very low on the offensive side. I think the team that should be concerned... Yeah, holy cow. No one could sing. It's a don't you. All right, Tear It Up by Andrew WK. Um, if the UFL survives, should they bring back the teams that they um, that didn't make it in? Some of them, some of them. I think the Breakers, I think they could bring up the Maulers, the Sea Dragons. Uh, they won't bring back some teams, like the Gamblers and whatnot. They all auditioned for different songs that one would actually do Don't You and then they had a few of them come back and do it for a montage. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. All right, Andrew WK, tear it up. All right, never heard the song. Alex Marvis said Jaguars getting renovated. Yep, and they can't play while work is done. He thinks it's a possibility they could play quite a few home games in London. I don't see... Okay, I could see them playing like two home games in London like back-to-back. -back, or like a three-game home set in London back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. I could see that. But in terms of, like, making multiple trips to London, I can't see that. 82 UNC or 92 Duke. Ooh, that's stuff. I'm taking 92 Duke, but that's stuff. So I could see that. I could see the NFL doing, you know what, we're going to play four games in London. We're going to do three of them being the Jaguars. All three of them will be London home games for Jacksonville. And the other games will be Orlando and, like, they, or 
Daytona. All right, Chopper, Felbo, okay. I can see that happening, but I can't see him making multiple trips to London. So, I, I might do a video on that. If, if, um, if I can find the Marvis tweet and like, find the report, I could see that. That would make sense. That would make sense. I have no problem with that. Go to New York next week. Any restaurant suggestions? Sabaros. Definitely Sabaros. Um, there's a, um, I mean, it's New York. There's a lot of good restaurants in New York. I will say, uh, New York, if you go to New York and you go like a Penn Station to ride the train or whatever, get a slice at Rose's. Rose's is phenomenal. Um, There aren't many. There are not many great places in Jacksonville. No, there are not. No, there's very few good pizza places in Jacksonville. I've yet to find a really good one in Jacksonville. New York, tons. New York, because the rent is so high, like you have to have good food. You have to have good food. No, New York food is great. Eighty-two Idaho or something. Get yourself that easy. Eighty-two Idaho easily. <laughs> Jessica home for the Marlins game. Heartbroken. Don't know what to do. Yeah, I mean that's zero and four. Yeah, that's that's rough. It's the worst way to start a weekend. All right, NC State only down by two. Yeah, I'm an iPhone. I don't have an Android. Oh, wait. Oh, stadi oh stadium wise. Oh, wait. Oh, love your videos. Thank you so much, Riley. No, we, no we, we know they're not playing in Jacksonville. We know that. Fair pizza place in New York. Ooh, there, there's a really good local place by me. Um,. It's like ten minutes, like five minutes from my house. Creatures by three eleven, increasing the time. There we go. Thank you so much, Amphibia. Let me get your name in there and let's reset that timer. Um. Yeah. So in terms of the of place in, in Jacksonville, we know they're not playing in Jacksonville. We know that they're not going to play in Jacksonville when they renovate the stadium. They're not going to do that. So they're gonna they're they're thinking about it. Seems like. Wait, we don't wait. It's not one hundred ninety seven. It's one hundred thirty nine. Hang on. Hang on, that number is way off. That number is way off. <laughs> yeah, they're going to play as the D-backs win, so 3-1. and one. There we go. 3-11 creatures. That was a good summary, Andrew. Got a good beat. Got a good beat. Michigan-Birmingham, so the marquee game for week two? Um, I would say not yet. I think it's too early to tell in Michigan. I would say the marquee game is St. Louis, which I'm disappointed I'm not going to call that game. Yeah, so here's what we're saying is going to happen. Could happen, potentially. It takes two years to renovate the stadium. Year one, they play in Jacksonville at a reduced capacity, so like 45,000. Year two, they play in Daytona. Or Orlando, or Gainesville, but probably Daytona. Most unexpected Super Bowl matchup based on preseason expectations. It has to be, by far, Rams-Titans. I mean, Titans hadn't made the playoffs since 93. Rams were four-win team the year before. They were projected to be terrible and then projected to be the worst team in football when Trent Green went down. Has to be Rams-Titans. I mean, this year was probably the most anticipated. This year was probably the most expected. It didn't work out that way, just in terms of, like, obviously KC was not as good as we thought. But this year was probably most expected alongside Cowboys-Bills. All right, one point game, Duke NC State. Some other same is also going to work around here there. I mean, they but they have time to do it though. They have time to do it. They know it's coming. Daytona's talked about doing NFL games for a while. You want to try to down? Yeah. What do I do? I think I'm gonna get worse. I'm gonna, gonna schedule some therapy appointments if it gets worse. If we get swept by the Angels, it's gonna be so sad. I mean, look, therapy's always a good thing. Therapy's always a good thing. The 99-2000 Conference Championships feature the youngest combination of franchise team names. I mean, you had 76, yeah, so a 23-year team, a, two t a team that was a team for a year, technically, Jaguars for five years, and the well, the Rams are kind of skewing it, but but if we count them in, just for the time in St. Louis, yes. If we count for just for the time in St. Louis, yes. We got a fiver from Amphibia. Thank you so much. Let's increase that timer. Pat Singles was pretty expected. Yeah, that was pretty expected. Dummy pulls far line with brush. Ooh, all right. 
Yeah, this definitely feels like a song that came out in like 2002. If that's 311 for you. What was the most expected matchup of, of in 1999? Ooh, that's tough. Because I don't think the people were expecting the Broncos because they were retired. My guess would be people were expecting... Ooh, let me think. CBS. Um, let me think. What were people expecting that year? <sighs> Packers, probably? Maybe Vikings. You know, Vikings. Yeah, Vikings were pretty expected. Maybe Packers. I, I would say probably Vikings in the NFC. Packers up there, though. Packers up there. I would I would guess... Vi Jets, yeah. You know, Jets. Probably the Jets. Yeah, there's two teams that lost in the conference championship the year before. Let me check the preseason odds. Let me check. Maybe even the Jaguars. Honestly, maybe even the Jaguars. But let me check the preseason odds. Let me check what we got. According to Pro Football Reference. All right. The odds had... Broncos were plus 500. Really? Broncos Vikings was the most expected. That surprises me. That surprises me. I mean, when's the last time team started own four made the playoffs? I mean, we'll say this: the Braves were 19, the Nationals and the Braves were nineteen and thirty-one, and they won the World Series. Yeah, the the Vikings were plus four fifty, Broncos were plus five hundred, so that was the favorite, which kind of shocks me. Jags were plus six hundred, Jets were plus seven hundred, Packers were plus seven hundred. Um, the Rams were plus fifteen hundred, fifteen thousand. I mean, the Titans were plus three thousand. So. Yeah, the Rams had the fifth worst odds. I can't believe the Broncos were the were the the highest team from the AFC. I'm shocked by that. I'm genuinely shocked by that. I would have thought the Jets or the Jaguars or even Miami to some extent. I would not have guessed Denver with Elway retiring. I'll say we're really high on, on Greasy for whatever reason. All right, Dummy pulls fire alarm with brush. Okay. All right, so when friends pull the alarm. Oh, he didn't really pull the fire alarm with the brush. It just I was gonna say he didn't really pull the fire alarm with the brush, it just it just hit the yeah, no, that's, that's not his fault. That was funny. That's not his fault. That's not his fault. Um, I, I thought it was going to be, oh, the man, like, pulled the fire alarm with the brush and, like, wasted resources. Like, but no, he literally just caught the brush and just happened to hit the alarm. <laughs> yeah, game's over. The showboats win 18-12. Should I be upset or am I over? No, you, you're 0-4? Yeah, of course you should be upset at 0-4. Yeah, of course. At 0-4, you can't start worse than that. Can't be worse than that. The Braves did, though. The Braves started 0-4, 19-31, and, and they won the World Series. So, it's not the end of the world. What year... Wait, what year did Davis rush for in 2000... Wait. What year did Davis rush for? Oh, oh! Oh, I thought that the year 2000. Yeah, 98. 98, yeah. 98. I thought, I thought you meant, like, the year yards. Yeah. It's like, what on earth? Amphibia with a tour. Thank you so much. Rookie premier, Blaine Gabbard at Best Buy. Oh, God. All right, let's do that. Is Brunel the best QB for the Jags all time? By far. Right now, there is no close second. Trevor could get there. I think Trevor will get there. I think Trevor will overtake Brunel. But right now, it is hands down. Hands down. It is by far. Um, Mark Brunel. All right, rookie premier Blaine Gabbert. Oh no, you have every right to be tired of the team losing. Every right to be. All right, here we go. NFL rookie premier Blaine Gabbert. Oh god, I've never seen this. I don't know like a WWE emo in the may quiver and pain the most. I guess Hell in a Cell. Okay, those double zero. Who thought the double zero jerseys were a good idea? The double zero jerseys look terrible. It's like he is. He doesn't fit in that jersey at all. All 
I collected trading cards, had a Pete Rose rookie card, alright. <laughs> Although he's at Best Buy and the guy asks, have you, do you shop at Best Buy regularly? And he's like, no. I love that. I love that. You know, I looked at the preseason odds. Yeah, the, the Vikings were the favorite, but the Broncos were the second favorite. The Broncos were the second favorite. Which I'm shocked by. I really would have thought the Broncos would be the fourth favorite behind the Jets, Jaguars, um, Dolphins. Besides the Jags, what team am I rooting for to win their first role this upcoming season? I mean, the Lions and the Cardinals. Cardinals just because Arizona, but I mean, the the Lions would be fun. That fan base has been through a lot. All right. Well, that was a horrible interview. That was a horrible interview. <laughs> He has no charisma. He did not understand the assignment. All right, we've got another tour from Amphibia. Thank you so much. Monday Minute with Gardner Minshew. All right, we'll do that. We will do that. Thank you guys for the donations. We're close to 150. The next favorites. All right, let me let me look at that. So it's Vikings, Broncos, Jaguars, Jets, Packers, Niners, Bucks, Dolphins, Falcons. Those are all the teams that plus 1,000 or better. Past that, Seahawks, Bills, Cowboys, Washington, Tennessee, Giants, Patriots, Chiefs, Cardinals, Steelers, Chargers, Raiders, Colts, Ravens, all the teams within, like, plus 10,000. Saints, Panthers, Rams, Lions, Browns, Eagles, Bears, and the worst team was the Bengals. A 35-point comeback? Um, I mean, we got 33, so I guess, I guess could be close enough. Could be, could be close. I'd say next 10 years, potentially. All right, Money Man with Garner Minshew. All right, let's do that. And then we got a fiver from Michael Hodel from Brazil um, with some Megadeth. Hook and mouth, Frank be with you and with you as well, my man. Oops, not that much. Thank you for the five, my man. Uh, why is the NCAA game on TBS rather than CBS? It's part of the, the media rights deal now. They alternate every year. So that's why. That's why. All right. Monday Minute with Minshew. All right, here we go. I love this guy. <laughs> the county fair! <laughs> He's got such charisma. He's amazing. <laughs> that was incredible. He's got such charisma. Oh my god. I mean, we always do we have charisma, but that's incredible. I've never seen that before. Alright, hook and mouth by Megadeth. 42 point comeback possible? Uh, probably not. I, I would not think so. How hard was it left the Colts 33 point comeback? I was cracking up. Jeff Saturday, like, because Jeff Saturday did not serve to be a coach, and I felt so vindicated after that. I mean, I felt vindicated this entire season, but yeah. Would I rather see another KC Super Bowl win, or the Browns win with Deshaun Watson as the MVP? Chiefs. Easily the Chiefs. Easily the Chiefs. It's tolerable, at least. I'm, I'm used to it. Red Sox win 5-1, for those wondering. Why are the college championships on cable rather than over there at TV? ESPN figures that they can increase the amount of people that buy ESPN and they can drive up the price for ESPN versus putting on ABC. That's why I put games on streaming services, too. Right, I would put on another baseball game, but there's nothing on. It's um, 12-4 in the Padres game. Are we got a position player mention? I'm surprised we didn't get one for the... um. Oh, jeez. I'm surprised we didn't get one for the... um. The... Uh, for what? The... The D-backs Rockies game when it was 16-1. Amphibia with a tour. <laughs> I know that song all too well. That, um, not one of my best songs. Not one of my best at all. I've done way better. I've, I've, I've done way better. That was like in high school, too. Holy cow. I'll, I'd be cr I'll be cringing the whole time. Let me reset the timer. Oh, man. 
I came out with that song in like an hour. Yeah, that was like... I like the beat. I might change the beat, though. I don't know. That one definitely is a, is a B-side. It's definitely... If I do an album, that's a B-side. I've got like 300 songs better than that one. I'd rather see the Browns women have someone like Njoku with MVP. Yeah, yeah, that would be... That'd be tolerable, at least. Browns win, but, but Watson doesn't play. I can do that. Moving Monday Night Raw to Netflix. Great decision or bad one? Great one. Great one for Netflix, especially, because the problem with, with streaming services like Netflix, um, Disney Plus, is that you watch a show and then it's done. And then you get rid of the service. But wrestling's forever. Wrestling is forever. They do something every single week, so they'll never cancel. So all the wrestling fans will stay on Netflix forever, which is great. Duke NC State? No, I, I already have that game on the TV. I'm talking about, like, my side TVs. I got Duke NC State. 40 and 42 is a good record having the NBA. I mean, I'm not sure it's good, but... Do I still see the women's final getting higher ratings than the men's? So it has to be a select criteria. Duke cannot be playing in the game. So that's number one. Duke cannot make the final. Number two, Iowa has to play against South Carolina. It has to be that. Iowa, South Carolina in the final, and Duke does not make the final. The women will draw higher than the men. Because also Duke is on cable, or men's is on cable, and the women are on ABC. And a much more favorable time slot. Sunday afternoon versus um, a Monday at 9. Most annoying song of all time. This guitar beat goes hard. Holy cow. Most annoying song of all time in my opinion. Oh man. There's so many. I'd probably say... Harlem Shake. Sel Selfie by the Chainsmokers. Selling by the Chainsmokers. Yeah, Selling by the Chainsmokers was a terrible song. And then, like, they make good music afterwards. But Selfie was a horrible song. That was annoying. All right, there's a foul in the play. All right, NC State going the line. Yeah, NC State winning would be great for ticket prices. Because they would plummet. Uh, would I compare Super Bowl 46 to 42? I mean, there was kind of various at the time. Yes. Giants beat the Patriots. Crazy catch on the final drive. Yeah. 48 would probably be... I don't know what 48 would be. I don't know what I, what I would do for 48. 48, because it, really it's the first play of the game, and then the kickoff return for touchdown... Uh, probably the kickoff return that ended it. Probably 35. What state destined to get a team? I'm not sure anyone's any new state is destined to get a team. Um, I'd probably say the, the best bet would, if I had to pick a state, would probably be Oregon. Unwritten by Natasha Benenfield? No, I, I like that song. I like that song. UConn will attract high ratings, yes, but not Caitlin Clark level ratings. The finals can get high ratings no matter what. It's more of just will it get higher than the men. They have a hard time getting that song out of my head. <laughs> I have a hard time getting songs like out of my head, like like very, very hard time, which is good. Which is good. It means the song is good. Um, that one is actually pretty easy to get. Listen, to we built the city on repeat for a week. Or the Browns listen, or Browns went super with the Sean Watson song. We built the city. That's actually a good song. I like it a lot. Maybe after a week it get old, but I could listen to that. Chargers Rares with the lowest rating for Thursday Night Football last season. I mean, I, I get why. That game, it was like 38 nothing at the half or something. I get why. All right, 44-30 at NC State. We got 30 seconds left in the overtime period. 44-40. All right. Yeah, like, like there, trust me, there are some songs that I wrote like a decade ago and I cannot get out of my head. But I don't like produce them because it's, it's like, I can't like... Like, it's tough because it's, it's almost like I'm, like, such a perfectionist when it comes to that, so I can hear it in my head. But, like, I try to, like, put it in, like, a garage band or, like, play it on the keyboard. Like, wait, this doesn't sound the way that I need it to. Like, like I need someone with, like, the vision. If I could get rid of any play-by-play -play announcer in any sport, who would it be? Mine's a hot take. You can't say Mike Breen. Oh, wow. Wow, that is a hot take. Um, it wouldn't be him. My, my pick would probably be... I mean, at this point in time, at this point in time, I would probably say, huh. man, that, that 
that's tough. Maybe Tom McCarthy? For football, at least, maybe Tom McCarthy? Amphibia with the tour! Chris Myers, yep, that, that's, yep. Sometimes it's so obvious that you forget, yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's just so obvious you forget, yeah. Yeah, Chris Myers. A Peter Drinks Red Bull, Family Guy. All right, let's do that. Let's do that. Y'all yeah, know how Jefferson Airplane went to Jefferson Starship and then, Jeff and then Starship. Like, like the change it sounds incredible. Peter Drinks Red Bull. All right, here we go. Oh, with the ray of light thing. Yes. Oh, yes. I remember this. I remember this. Such a great parody of, of the Ray of Light music video. <laughs> Jake Bates already getting NFL interest. I'm not surprised. I mean, he hits a 64 yard field goal twice. I get it. I'd be interested in too. I think like 20 teams in the league would be interested in a guy like that. Let's see what Kurt Menfee couldn't do math. I mean, Menfee's not a good play to play guy. He's good in the studio, but he's not a good play to play. Um. With a one possession thing, so, someone brought that up again. I don't listen to the games with the announcers, but someone brought that up. Um, yeah, for baseball, I'm just talking football. I'm just talking football. Ray likes your favorite Madonna song. Ooh, it's a good song. My favorite one's probably Vogue. I gotta go Vogue. Oh, Marshmallow. Oh yes. Um, Happier's a good song. Um, I like Friends. I like Friends. Um, what other one does he have? Look at this photographer. He's got so many songs. Um, Wolves is good. Yeah, I like Friends. Happier is a good song. I like Come and Go. Oh, oh yeah, he's oh I forgot the Jonas Brothers. Yeah, Leave Before You Love Me is my favorite. Leave Before You Love Me, by far actually. I forgot that was Marshmallow. Because I knew Jonas Rosario, I forgot that was Marshmallow. But yeah, Leap Before Lemmy is, is his best song. I know it's basically Can't Smile Without You by Barry Manilow, but it's a good song. We Built This City is often listed as the worst rock song in like a set classic rock era. I get it, but I love it. It's a guilty pleasure of mine. I can't admit the lyrics are nonsense. The the it, It's a nonsense song, but oh man, the, it just starts with a punch and it just keeps going and going. I love it. I love it. All right, got time for one more question. As the clock is at zero and we're at the end of the OT period... Um, yeah, if you're a ball listener, prepare for the worst. Yeah, that's, that's a harsh but true lesson, seems like. Yeah, I got time for one more question. Again, as a reminder, tomorrow night, we've got our GeoGuessr stream. Um, Monday Night Q&A. That'll be a, a lot of fun. I'm going to put a time cap on that one. Not that we ever really go over, but that stream will be over... It'll be over by 9 p.m., no matter what. And we just put the time on for us for the next few guess or stream. We'll do that um, just because I got the Yankee z back scheme later that night. Um, so that'll be interesting. Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, we got trivia. Um, we got a cool thing coming on Tuesday. I'll share that. Um, Saturday, Sunday, we're doing UFL games. Three of them. We're not doing the the um, the Battle Hawks game just because I will be at the Final Four. But we are doing the Saturday game and the two Sunday games. So we'll be doing that. Um, a lot of streams, a lot of content coming your way. JG9 News will have videos coming out. With UFL and NFL news, draft news, interest news, top 30 visits, anything that happens, I will talk about it. JG9, we got video coming out tomorrow. I want to get out. Apologies, couldn't get one over the past weekend. It's been killing me that I couldn't get one out. But we're going to do a Vikings related draft video from the 80s. Crazy video. We got more draft content coming and more membership stuff coming tomorrow as well. Dumb decisions, maybe. Um, I got to see if I can find the archive footage of the UFL games. Um, got to see if that's available. But we got. Um, we got a video coming out tomorrow on JG9 for sure. A, dr a draft related video from the 80s. And yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we got also membership videos coming. Um, been working really hard on, on those. I got some of them out. We got to get some more out. But we got some membership videos coming from people in the top tiers that requested video topics on JG and JG7 as well. Uh, a lot of stuff in the backlog. A lot of stuff in the backlog. We've been getting to them. Um, but some of these stuff are so good, I'm going to do documentaries on them. Like Cardinals Giants 83. Jason Meyer had a very good request for that one, so we're doing that. Uh, John Hadle trade, that's going to be a documentary. That's coming out soon. Archie Manning doc from Michael Hodel, that's coming out soon. A lot of stuff that's coming out, and we've got some of them already, and we're getting to some more. And thank you so much again for tuning in. Um, JG9 signing off. Have